Backrooms Level 13, aka the Infinite Apartments, is one of the most famous levels in the Backrooms, and it's classified as a Class 2 difficulty. You've all probably seen the picture that's on the level description. It's almost as famous as the Level 0 picture, in my mind. The level is what looks to be an apartment building with extremely long hallways and a bunch of floors. Unlike its name, however, the Infinite Apartments are not actually infinite, there's around a thousand floors. The hallways themselves have a 1980s ish style build and the decoration there is also from the 80s and there's also weird looking brown carpets white and yellow walls and this kind of trippy geometric pattern on the walls too i mean it's it's kind of cool there are elevators and staircases both on this level but the elevators can only go to different backrooms levels not different floors of this level so if you're on floor four and you want to go to floor eight you're gonna have to walk up the stairs sorry the most common entities in this level are the window entity, and they typically show a bright blue void behind their glass, so just avoid those. Getting near them at all is very dangerous, but I'll talk about the rest of the entities in the entity section later on in the video. Some of the apartments are actually open, and you can walk into them, and you can actually claim the apartments, or a certain apartment. Inside, they look just like normal, smallish apartments, decorated with beds and all that good stuff, and they have the same decor from the 80s as the hallways do. Like I said, you can actually claim residency of an apartment by going down to the lobby, which is floor zero, and asking the faceling behind the desk to give you a key to that corresponding number, and then they will, and then you have an apartment for free. Pretty cool. The inside of some of the apartments, there are actually computers there, which are already connected to the Wi-Fi through the level, which is cool if you want to hop on the internet or whatever, but there's not computers in all of them, just some. And as for the entities here, there's the windows in the hallways, like I said, and there's that face lane at the front desk, but there's also some other really dangerous stuff lurking around, like clumps, smilers, and death moths, to be specific. Now these entities mainly hide in empty dark apartment rooms, so be careful if you're opening a door, you don't want to get eaten by a clump. Now other than that, there aren't any entities here, which is why the level is just classified as class 2. There's only one base here and it's located on the 283rd floor. This floor entirely is claimed by the BNTG group and it's a small trading post for their bigger outposts. And the only people allowed in are BNTG members, which is lame. To enter this level, you can go into an apartment building back on level 11, or you can no-clip through the floor on level 12, or you can no-clip into a yellow wall on level negative two. Now, if you wanna leave the level, you can find a red wall in one of the hallways and just no-clip through that to go to level negative one, or you can pick one of the other three listed exits. To summarize this explanation, like I'll be doing for every level, Backrooms Level 13 is a level that's around 1,000 floors and it's full of tons of apartments and hallways, which all have this whitish yellow wallpaper with geometric shapes and patterns on them. The floors here are brown carpets, and you can actually stay in the individual apartments if you ask the face lean in the lobby on floor zero to give you a key. Now the main thing you're gonna have to avoid is smilers, clumps, and death moths hiding in empty apartments, but other than that, it's a pretty chill level. And to me, this level gives off huge liminal space vibes. Overall, I love it. Backrooms level 14, AKA Paradise, is classified as class paradise, shocker. And apparently it's beautiful, serene, and perfect. But I'm not buying that for one second, and you'll see why later. But this classification graphic is also a little sus because it looks an awful lot it's like a class five graphic. So I'm thinking it's dangerous. Now, this level is pretty hard to summarize in the way that I typically do it because it's written in like a short story narrative type way. So instead of summarizing it, I'm gonna read certain parts of it and then explain what I think that part means. Don't worry, it's not that long. The entire thing is just like a paragraph in length. So I'm just gonna be breaking down the weird, creepy entry. Let's get into it. Level 14 is an oasis. The forest of your dreams shimmering in the night. Well, when an entry starts like that, I think they're lying. It then says, close your eyes for a moment. You can see it, right? The crimson grass wet with dew. Yeah, so you see the theme that this is going for. You kind of see what they're aiming at. It sounds extremely sus 
And to me, they're trying to show you how beautiful this level is by saying things like, you'll be happy here, I'm sure of it. But I don't think I would be happy here. I don't think I would be happy here. And then it says, a cacophony fills your ears. You can't think, but you don't need to. Aren't you relieved to have the burden of thought lifted from your shoulders? Don't you feel so much lighter now? You can almost float away. Perhaps you will. Look at the other guests lying peacefully in the soil. Okay, pause like right there. Lying peacefully in the soil. Does that not mean that there's just a bunch of unalived people just laying on the ground? Like, could I be guessing that? I think I am. And I definitely am getting the vibe that the creator is trying to lure people, wanderers, or whatever, to level 14 by claiming how beautiful it is. Now, under the bases and outposts tab, there's more narrative style writing, of course. And it reads, children line up in rows. They howl beautifully at the moon. What? They, they howl? What? Waiting to become whole. You want to help them, don't you? Of course you do. After all, they only want to help you. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? I guess it's weird. Who are the other children it's talking about? Maybe the children are other creatures that live here or other members of like a cult or something that survive off of eating wanderers that get lured here? Maybe? But the next sentence is the most sus of all. It says, all you need to do is surrender yourself. It won't hurt, I promise. I bet you feel your mind leaking. Don't worry, we're just fixing a few things so that we'll be perfect for you and you'll be perfect for us. You see, <laughs> that's just terrifying, bro. Like, what are they talking about surrendering yourself and why are they saying it won't hurt? Like I said just now, it might be some kind of sacrificial group of entities or some kind of animal type group, or it could be like a cult that lives in these woods but yeah i mean that's pretty terrifying and the last sentence of this entry is pretty interesting that's it let us in and soon you'll be here too we'll have a great feast when you come after all we want to welcome you okay now i think i get what they're talking about when they say feast because i think you're gonna be the feast or whoever goes there i genuinely think this is a cult trying to lure somebody in the back rooms to come to their level could be wrong, just a theory, but let me know what you think down below. Now following the same theme as the rest of the writing, the entrances and exits are written directly into narrative form and are addressed to the reader. The entrance part says, you know how to get there by now, just keep going, you're so close. It's pretty vague, don't even know how to connect it to anything, but I, it just sus. The exit says, you won't have to worry about that. Like, that's the entire thing. He says, you won't have to worry. Which, to me, means that you won't ever be leaving the level. <laughs> so, I recommend avoiding this dangerous level. So, to summarize what I think level 14 is, I think paradise is actually the home of a cult. A human one, to be exact. Could be animals, but I think it's humans. I mean, there's other weird groups that live in the back rooms. There's other cult-type areas, so who's to say something ancient or something very historical isn't on this level, and they try to lure you there to trap you. I think that the writer of the level wrote it with the entire goal of trying to lure people there so that they can either, like, trap them or do whatever culty things they want to do, especially since apparently we won't have to worry about leaving. Sounds fishy to me, and I definitely recommend avoiding it, but I think it's a good entry on the wiki dot. Backrooms level 15 is classified as a class 0 level and is safe, secure, and has no entities. Now you might think, how is the level crazy if there's nothing there? Well, you'll see in a second, trust me. The level is made up of a bunch of futuristic style hallways with shiny reflective surfaces. There are also some sections of the level that are completely dark with no lights and you can't even see in them at all, but those are pretty rare. Throughout the hallways, you can faintly hear the sound of engines roaring in the distance. Now, these machines or engines are inside of rooms that are sealed shut with big doors. These doors can be opened up, though, if you want to explore around them. There's a bunch of different machines in this level, and they range in size from being as small as a computer or being the size of an entire room. It just depends on which one you're looking at. And these machines actually can manufacture real objects, like some produce steel rods, but they're 
there are some of them that seemingly make nothing, but still move. It's weird. Now, people originally thought that the hallways were infinite, but it's now known that there's just so many hallways and it seems like it's infinite, but it's not actually. It's around 6,000 kilometers squared, to be exact. All of the rooms and the halls are made out of white concrete floors with reflective steel walls and roofs and steel beams holding it all up. On the ceiling and some of the walls, there are these really bright lights that reflect off of all the surfaces that make it really eerie and futuristic looking. And the only thing that breaks up this really monotonous color scheme is an occasional body just laying there on the ground. Yeah, that's uh, pretty terrifying. These bodies are people, and they're all dressed in lab coats. And on top of this, there's also makeshift weaponry found near them almost every time. And some of the bodies have signs of gunfire wounds, and it's unknown what happened here or why they're there, but they've been there for a long time. Now, earlier I was talking about the engine rooms that can produce stuff, but those aren't the only types of rooms here. In fact, there's labs, cafeterias, bedrooms, kitchens, and even control rooms scattered around the level. Most of the rooms have no furniture or anything on the ground, but some of them look like entire wars happen there. Just a huge war scene. In some of those rooms, there's also computers, and on this level, there's always a Wi-Fi signal that you can connect to. That'll come into play later. But yeah, some of the rooms have computers. But the weird thing is the files on these computers are in an unknown language, which honestly is pretty terrifying. I mean, you have all these corpses and weapons, and now you got these computers with weird languages. I, I don't know, man. I guess a good thing is that there's been no entity seen here alive, except there is one room with corpses of hounds stacked up on top of each other the entire height of the ceiling. What even is this level, bro? Like, what? Now, the way this level was discovered was by a wanderer who came here from level 10 and ended up in a big control room. That wanderer's name is Onrik, and we're about to get into his story now. Now, this big control room had access to the rest of the level, so, you know what, Onrik just set up a camp in that big room and decided to explore. But after two days of exploring, the door that he came to the level in shut by itself and literally won't open. And it hasn't opened for two entire years so this guy has been stuck in this entire level for two whole years now the good news is that the computers in the rooms do have internet access and meg has been able to send books you know correspondence games and you know stuff like that to keep him sane while he's stuck here he's documented his entire stay on the level and to this day he's still alive and is trying to explore more of the level and crack the code of the unknown language on the computer files and as for bases on this level the only base here is onrik's base but there has been remnants of other camps that onrik has found but they look like they were abandoned a long time ago there's also some computer scanning graphs that onrik has taken and some readings that he's gotten and the data is actually on the wiki dot if you want to go read it, but I'll show you the picture of some of the scans because I'm not going to go through it. It's 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 a lot. My question is, why is this level like a battle zone? You know, where's the bodies of the scientists? Why are they there? And why are hounds stacked up in a room? And why are there bullets everywhere? I don't know. Lots of questions here, but there's no one else that's ever been here that has any correspondence with Meg except Onrik. So let me know down below. Also, the only entrance to this level was found by Onrik himself, and so far, he's the only person to ever enter here and be alive. So, we still don't know how those scientists got there, we still don't know how the hounds got there, we don't know anything. But the way he entered was by this big wall on level 10 turned the same material and color as the shiny white walls here. So when he noticed that, a door appeared in that white wall on level 10, so he just walked through it, and he came to here, level 15. And after a few days, the door shut and trapped him here. It's creepy. The level entry for level 16 starts with a warning screen that reads, The updated database entry for this level is unavailable. Would you like to search for an older entry? And then it searches for offline backups, and it finds two files. Now, file 1 is dated 610, and file 2 is dated 912, but neither show what year they were dated, so I'll just start with the first file. File 1 opens up as the first part of this level, and it has a survival difficulty of 0, and it's 
it's safe, secure, and no entities. Now this section of the level looks like a rainforest type ecosystem with fields and rolling hills where it's slightly overcast and foggy at all times. The level's rainforests are a lot like real life rainforests, but with one big difference, gravity. Obviously, here in real life, gravity keeps us to the ground, right? We can't fly or jump high. But in this part of level 16, the gravity is much less strong, which means you can jump higher and slightly float, but it doesn't have any effect on the wildlife or fauna here. There's not even a known reason why this happens, it just does. So go with it. There's actually no day or night cycle here in this part, and it's constantly at a dawn time, and it hovers around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius at almost all times. But the next sentence of the entry says, was our level key wrong? We've already been here, but the key seemed to change direction. Everything looks different than what they reported. And you'll see why they said that in the second part of the level in the second file. But for the rest of file one, there's no bases or outposts, even though theoretically it would be possible to set one up here, but there's no consistent way of entering the level, so there's no point. The only semi-consistent way of entering this section would be to get on level 75 and touch a liquid metal, which will take you here. You can also leave this section of the level by climbing a tree to get to level 46. But yeah, that was the end of the first file, the one from 610, and the guy writing this file notices that something is off because the level key they used to get here changed how it looked and changed directions, and he says that this level had supposedly already been found, so when he went there again, it looked different, which is weird. And that's why it's altered topography, because it changes. So now for file 2, which was that one discovered on 912, it's classified as a class undetermined because it's got really weird properties and some unknown info about it, and it's just unstable in general. This part of level 16 looks like an arctic climate, Pretty similar to the ones from real life, except the snow and ice on the ground here is more reflective than in real life, so it's almost like a mirror, which would make it extremely bright. And this part of the level also has a day-night cycle, the first part didn't, and the cycle takes 13 hours for a full day-night. The temperature here can be anywhere from 40 degrees to mid-50 degrees, even though there's snow on the ground. Not sure how that works, but oh well. There actually are some entities here, but it's very rare. And the main one is called the Light Guides, which are also in the Crimson Forest, and they just float around and glow and are harmless. However, there are no bases here, and you couldn't put one here if you wanted to because of the layout constantly changing of the level. It changes all the time in this specific part. And here's what the author of these two files has to say, quote, don't stay here when the environment shifts. Glaciers jut out of the ground, soaring high into the sky. Rivers suddenly begin to gush out of boulders. The landscape begins to freeze over, causing the air to chill. Small orbs begin to surround us, almost as if a warning. If you aren't careful, you can become encased within the changing terrain. I made it out with only frostbite and a few scrapes. Others weren't so lucky. Nice! Now to enter this frozen part of level 16, you can find an orange patch on level 75 and touch it, and there are a couple of other unconfirmed entrances that don't work every time, so no point in trying them. And the exit of this part of the level changes with every alteration in geography, but each time that exit will send you to level 46. As of right now, the exit is standing on top of an ice sheet covered in sand, and it'll send you to level 46. But like I said, it's not always going to be that way. To end the entry, the author says, quote, wish we knew that before entering. Walked into a rainforest, walked out of a tundra. Pretty cool. Level 17 is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe, secure, and doesn't have any entities except one. The level itself takes place inside of a huge aircraft carrier ship, which is, you know, obviously these things, if you've never seen one. The layout of this level is kind of crazy though, because it's made out of hallways that are always twisting and turning, and they go on for an infinite amount of time. Now specifically, the hallways look like an Essex-class aircraft carrier, which is now discontinued in real life, which makes this even creepier. The hallways themselves are infinite, and if you walk around long enough, you'll eventually run into some flooded halls where there's water up to your knees. And I'll explain why those are significant in a second. The entire level only has one type of entity that wanders the halls, and they're called imprints. 
Now, pretty much, these imprints are exact copies of people who have explored this level before. They aren't really dangerous physically, like they're not going to attack you, but for some reason, if you look at them for long enough, then you'll just start to get really anxious and stressed, especially if you look at them in the eyes. If you do that, then you might pass out for a few hours, which is no fun. No one knows why these imprints wander the halls, or how they look exactly like people who have been here, but we just know. This level has staircases that lead directly up, however, none of them go to the very top of the boat, so you can't really get on the top deck. You can just go to higher levels. And on these higher levels, there are actually windows that you can look out of. Now, you won't be able to see anything. You can't see ocean or, or beaches or anything. All you can see is this weird translucent light. And if you look at that light for too long, then somehow, some way, that light will start to fill up your lungs with water, which is it, terrifying. I mean, that's literally, that's creepy. And the light will continue to fill up your lungs with water until you look away, or if you just unalive first. Whichever comes first is what happens. Now, I just recommend to not look at the windows at all, because why would you want to get your lungs filled up with water? It doesn't make any sense. There are no bases here, and the only way you can enter this level is by finding an underwater light source on level 7, swimming to it, and then you'll be sent to this level. You can exit the level by walking upstairs until you find a red floored hallway, and this will take you back to level 11, or you can use one of those flooded hallways that I talked about earlier to jump into that water and take yourself back to level 7. Nice! So Backrooms level 18 is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is a safish overall level if you do it right. The level looks different to every person who gets to it. Now even though it looks different, it's still the same theme to everybody because it typically looks like a memory or a set of memories from their life, typically from ages 2 to 5. But the most common description is that it looks like a daycare or a preschool or a babysitter's house or an old bed or a playground, you know, just kid stuff. And if you don't have any specific memories of those kind of things, then the level itself will just be a blank void which is kind of sad. Throughout the level, there are always numerous voices that are whispering. There's no body specifically making these voices, but you can hear them in your head. They can whisper anything, but the main thing they normally whisper are your biggest regrets or your biggest mistake. No one knows how a random backrooms level can know what your biggest mistake or your biggest regret is, but apparently they know everything about you. And on top of this, the level can also resurface memories that you literally had forgotten about or had pushed out of your mind, like a childhood pet or something like that. Now, obviously, this can mess up someone's mind if they're hearing voices about their biggest regret in life. So just do your best to ignore that whispering. And if you do that, then you're going to have a pretty fun time reliving your old childhood memories. On the other side of that coin, the level is apparently addictive to some wanderers and they choose to spend all of their time here which technically can work since there's food and stuff in your memories. But honestly, I, I can't say that I blame them for wanting to stay here and live in their childhood memories forever instead of going back out to the back rooms because it's safer here and it's nostalgic. There's only one entity on the level and it's a plush sentient sapient dinosaur that if you find it, it'll lead you to food and water, but it's pretty rare to come across. The one outpost here is called The Children, and it's a group made up of around 20 to 25 people, and the people who are in the group are the ones that stay here forever. Even though each person sees a different memory, they can all still see each other, which is pretty nice. To enter at this weird core level, well, there's no concrete way yet. The only way that might work is if you get a random resurgence or a random recollection of memories from your childhood while being on any other level in the back rooms. So if you're feeling really nostalgic, you might get sent here. To leave this level, you can find that plush dino and they'll take you to an exit. Or you can just walk through wherever you came from or do again whatever you did to get here since no one knows exactly how to do that. I gotta say, this level is pretty creepy but wholesome at the same time since it just replays old childhood memories. It's depressing, but at the same time, it's not. I don't know. I feel like I'd visit this level, not gonna lie.
So Backrooms Level 19 is classified as a Class 2 difficulty and is unsafe, but it's secure, kind of. The level itself looks like an old attic that's falling apart. It's set up into different sections with random roof shapes, like some of them could be triangle roofs, some of them could be square roofs. It just depends on where you're at in the level. And these spaces, most of them are loaded to the brim with boxes, vintage furniture, and a bunch of just other clutter, you know, just like a typical cluttered attic. A lot of that stuff is actually damp, and no one knows how it's damp, like it's in an attic, you'd think it wouldn't be. But at the same time, some of it's completely dry, so. And those dry boxes are typically the ones with the most useful supplies, like food, which is nice. The only problem is that sometimes if you take food out of a box, it instantly decays, even though it was normal and fine and fresh inside of the box, the second you take it out, it just rots. And this doesn't just happen to food either, it can happen to clothes and furniture that have been taken out of boxes too. Sometimes people have also reported dizziness or nausea or even hallucinations while on this level, so it's a common thought that whatever makes the food and stuff decay also makes people sick. Who knows? Underneath the floorboards of the attic where you're standing, you can sometimes see a faint orange glow or a white glow that looks like it's coming from maybe a fireplace. Although, you can't see a fireplace, it just has that kind of glow to it. This glow has a strange, addicting, trance-like quality that lures wanderers into staring at it for a long time. And some claim that it even gives them a sense of tranquility if they watch it, which is kind of wacky. It's unknown where the glow comes from or why it makes people act like they do, but it's thought that it's somehow connected to the weird decaying stuff that happens. In a few weird cases, the glow has been somewhat sentient and has actually infected the mind of people that have been looking at it and it told that person that it exists, which is really weird, not gonna lie. And because of this, it's recommended to not come here at all because who wants to be mind controlled by a random glow? Not me. There are not any bases here, and there's no other entities, so for that reason it's kinda safe, as long as you ignore the glow. And you can enter this level by climbing into a random hole in level 1's walls, or you can come here through level 18 by no clipping through their walls. And you can leave this level by falling through a non-glowing hole in the floor, which can send you to a variety of levels. Or you can pick one of the other three, like going through a door which will randomly appear. Now these doors are typically smaller, but they still work obviously or you can find a handheld game or arcade device and start playing it to be sent to level negative two there's a bunch of ways out which is good you're not stuck here trust me but that glow thing i mean that still gives me the creeps and addicts are creepy enough as they are but adding this weird stuff on top of it just makes it creepier Backrooms level 20 is classified as a class 0 difficulty and is overall a pretty safe level. The level itself looks like a massive warehouse that's specifically around 200 to 300 kilometers or 124 miles to 286 miles in size. And those measurements might not be 100% correct, but that's all that's been discovered so far. This warehouse also has rooms inside of it and not just a huge open space, but these rooms are typically around 30 meters or around 100 feet in length and the rooms themselves are normally filled up completely with old machinery like forklifts and you know stuff like that and specifically this stuff is from different time periods and even though some of the machinery is really old it all still works perfectly which is pretty cool Another weird thing about the rooms is that there's like this oil substance that coats all the floors and it drips down from the ceiling as well. It's extremely sticky and it's recommended to not touch it or inhale it or anything. Between the rooms that I just talked about, there are those huge open corridors that look like warehouses that you've all seen before, except most of the floor space is taken up by pallets of drinks or boxes and crates, racks, you know. Typical warehouse stuff. This stuff is everywhere and it kind of forms like a maze and it cuts the level into these short straight paths that you have to use to get through the level. Now you might think that, you know, you've got an infinite supply of drinks or food or whatever because of all the stuff here, but you'd be wrong because the drinks are all filled with that oil substance from earlier. No matter what their label says, you know, it could say Fanta, but still have the oil in it. Not fun. 
and kind of goofy. This level has no outposts or bases or entities, and there's not really any room to put a base because it's stacked to the brim with stuff. To enter this level, you can go walk through any rusty door from level 19, and to exit, you can find a corridor with no lights, all the lights completely off, and that's got a completely soaked floor with the oil, and if you walk through that for a few hours, you'll be sent to level 6 or level 22. Backrooms level 21 is classified as a class 4 difficulty, which is crazy because it's the first really difficult one in a long time, and it's unsafe, unsecure, and has a medium entity count. The level is made up of four specific really long hallways with random places and random doors in them. Each of those long hallways is specifically around 26 miles long, and they all meet together in the middle of the level. So they're kind of shaped like an X, all going towards the same point. Now I'll get into what the halls look like in just a second. First, I want to talk about that middle area where they all meet. So the middle area is this smallish open room with chairs and desks. Kind of like an empty classroom, which is creepy as it is, but I guess a good thing is that there's no entities that spawn in this area. So it's pretty safe. The hallways themselves are constantly changing. They can shapeshift into something completely different at any given time, so their shape can change, their layout can change, and they can become impossible to go through in some rare occasions. But the one thing that always stays the same is that the doors on either side of the hallway stay in the same spots. No matter how much the halls actually change themselves, the doors will still be in the same side and in the same or similar spots. Now these doors can lead to random places in the back rooms, even negative levels or sub-levels, which is pretty rare for normal back rooms levels, but, you know. It's also really dangerous, because you never know where it's going to send you. Most of the time, the doors just take you someplace else in the level, though, so that's cool. But it's also not recommended to just open random doors. Like, don't just rip open the first door you see, because you might get sent to a really dangerous place. There actually are some doors that are known and cataloged to lead certain places, but there aren't that many, so I'm going to go ahead and read them. Doors labeled 105 lead to level 0, and doors labeled 356 lead to level 356. It's a shocker. Doors made out of sandstone can lead directly to level 46. Doors labeled 34 lead to level negative 6. And of course, they had to put it in here, but doors labeled with a smiley face lead to the level fun. Yeah. And doors labeled 8 through 20 all lead to their respective levels. So if you go through a door labeled level 8, you'll end up in level 8. And the doors that don't have any labels sometimes can lead to level 1.5. But yeah, those are the ones that are set in stone. But like I said, the other doors can just lead to completely random spots, so just don't risk it. Some of those hallway sections can also be filled completely with creatures and entities, but which specific hallways are filled and where they're at also changes, just like the hallways do. So it's impossible to tell you which specific places are entity infested. So the most common entity here is actually clickers, which are relatively harmless, so that's nice. But there also have been completely unknown and undocumented entities seen here as well. So make sure when you round a corner, you watch out. This level is also home to random items on the walls, like almond water or level keys, or in some rare cases, fire salt, which is pretty rare and useful. Although you're supposed to avoid all level keys here because they're untrustworthy. So there's that. There's also one specific door in this level called the exit door that if you open it, it leads to three pitch black hallways and they're really long and they're much longer than the ones in the main part of the level. But these hallways past the exit door are infested with all types of creatures, but they do have some really nice materials and objects in them like loads of almond water and fire salt and stuff, but you'll have to fight off a bunch of creepy monsters, so I'm not sure if it's really worth it to do that, but to each their own, I guess. There aren't any bases here since the layout changes all the time, you really couldn't set one up if you wanted to, and to enter, you can go through a random break in the wall from level 13, which typically has a high-pitched ringing coming from it, so that's how you know where you're at. And to exit, just go through one of those doors that I talked about earlier that are already mapped out and their exits are confirmed, and you should be fine.
Backrooms Level 22 is classified as a Class 5E, wow, which means that the environment is the most dangerous part of the level. Now, the level itself used to just be a normal parking garage, but at some point in time, it was colonized and lived in by people. Lots of people. Lots of people. And then it was ultimately abandoned. The people who lived here were from a secretive society that lived here sometime before 1925 because that is when the level was first discovered. And when it was first found, explorers didn't think that the level was anything special because it just looked like a parking garage. It was filled up with cars and old shopping carts and those shopping carts were actually full of materials and supplies. So, so many supplies that it attracted enough people that it became kind of a hub for trade. In the year 1987, level 22 was actually declared as a micro-nation, and it was independent from any faction in the backrooms. After this happened, the level filled up with people, and by 1990, those people decided to seal off and gate any entrance to the level so it wouldn't become overrun with new people. The level was getting too crowded, and the supply could not keep up with the demand. The group that stayed named themselves M's Table and they started to negotiate trading with Meg and other societies, and they lived in tents in the parking garage. They mined concrete and used those resources from the shopping carts to build their little empire and to trade with. And the group was actually really secretive about how it worked, and almost no one knows anything about their actual social life, politics, or what they did in their spare time. I mean, you're stuck in a parking garage. But what is known is that the level's people were split into really sharp, classist systems, where the most important people lived higher up inside of the parking garage, and the less important people lived below them on the lower levels. The people at the top kind of lived like kings, in a way, and the people below them were like their servants. Kind of lame. But all that didn't last long because the level became abandoned by all of its inhabitants. The actual cause for everyone leaving isn't fully known, but it's probably because they physically destroyed so much of the level, the concrete and stuff, it just almost collapsed. So they decided to leave before it did. So now that it's abandoned and all crumbled and debris everywhere, level 22 just looks like the debris of a car park with smashed cars and smashed tents everywhere. And that's why it's dangerous because of how easy everything crumbles under your feet. The higher up you go, the more dangerous it is because the floor can just fall right up from under you and you can fall thousands and thousands of feet. The reason it all collapsed is, like I said, the colony that lived there mined concrete to trade and they mined out massive caverns where that concrete was. And after a while, that chipped away at the structural integrity of the entire level and it eventually fell. There's this chart on the Wikidot that actually details how many people were estimated to live on each floor, so you can go check that out if you want to. There are no current bases or outposts here, and none have even tried to start one up since M-Stable fell. There's no point. To enter this crumbly level for whatever reason you have, you can find a door on level 21 or 23 to lead to the bottom floor of this level. And to exit, you have to go back in the way you came because, like I said earlier, lots of those exits were barred and closed off. Backrooms level 23 is a class 4 question mark difficulty and is unsafe, overgrown, and has a medium entity count. This has got to be one of the most unique levels on the Wikidot, and it has one of the most unique level classifications that I've seen. The entire level itself is basically a huge super organism that's the size of a dwarf planet. Pretty much, it's just one huge living planet that's made up of trees and caves. The trees can look like any trees from real life, but there's also huge ones that we'll get into in a second. But the level itself is described as a similar size as the dwarf planet in real life called Ceres. You can travel all through the center of this level by using the natural tunnels that are carved out. The tunnels are surrounded by wood and stone and resemble just a normal cave system. Or you can walk around the surface of the planet, which is covered in really thick and dense forests. Now these forests are so thick that there's barely any light that comes through them to the ground. 
And the trees that I talked about earlier that are on the surface are from all over the real world as well, and they normally wouldn't be trees that are grown together, like oaks and evergreens are right next to each other here. But there's also these massive trees here that are like two miles tall and grow up through the ground called the green giants. These things can grow from the core of the very planet itself. There's also some extinct trees here, but it doesn't name any that are there, so it just says they're extinct. So under the tree covered surface of the level, there are huge caverns and open rock cutouts and caves and pathways that I talked about earlier. Some of the caverns have specific names, and some of the rooms in the caves have specific names as well. Like the glow rooms, for example. In the glow rooms, there are several trees that grow, even without the sunlight. There can be so many trees that actually it seems like there's an underground forest, even though there's no light. Now the areas like this are lit up by an entity called the Gardener Saris, which are glowy, bioluminescent things that light up the trees and the stuff down here. They can be in a bunch of different colors, and they're pretty chill. If you've played Ark Survival Evolve, they kind of look like the map Aberrant. If you know, you know. The atmosphere down here in these caverns is damp and cool and earthy, and it's also the place where the most entities and vegetation spawns. So be careful. Pretty much think of a fantastical underground wooden city. The next part of the level is called the Ancient Ruins, and it's not just really one part, it's a collection of all the abandoned structures in the caves. All of these structures are extremely old and covered in roots and stones and vines and moss, and there's even some of them that look like they're from real life, but with slight alterations. Like the Great Pyramids of Giza are down there, but they're in a circle, or like the Roman Colosseum is down there as well, but it's shaped in like a square which is pretty cool. Inside of the ruins, there are some artifacts like poetry on tablets and cloth and some paintings from real life, but all the stuff here is really decayed and it's really fading away, so you can tell it's been there for a long time. Right outside of one of the ruins, there's a message written on a tablet in Latin. I'll get to what it says in a second, but that's the first of many scribblings written in this level. There's even graffiti scribbled on the inside of ruins that looks like someone hastily wrote it, like they were in a hurry or something. That plaque that I was just talking about says, we dedicated this great sphere of Giza to the great gardener in hopes of forgiveness for the great wrong we have committed. Already our purple eyes have turned green. We have started to return to the earth, forgotten and overgrown. Our only hope is that, alone and petrified, we will not disappear. So yeah, I gotta be honest, that's, that's creepy. The very core of this giant living planet thing is the part of the level that remains barely explored. It's the lushest area, the most plants grow here, the most entities are here. It's like a life center. The very core of this center is a huge never-ending reservoir of water that feeds the entire planet. And those two mile tall trees that I talked about earlier grow directly from this huge reservoir of water and they carry the water up its trunk and release the vapor into the caves and above the ground. So that's how the rest of the level gets its nutrients. The trees kind of work like roots if you think about it. This level is actually home to a really creepy entity called the buried centuries which can only be awoken if the phrase quote it's only a matter of time is said out loud. The sentries themselves are trapped inside of wooden roots and the bark of the cave walls, and if they're awoken, they jump out and they scream so loud and so constantly until you run away. The scream sounds like a chainsaw cutting wood, apparently, which is terrifying, to say the least. There's only been one base here, and it's called Meg Base Seedling, and they pretty much just explore the level and research it. Then they've got around 35 people that live with them. To enter this giant, fantastical, living planet, you can just walk through a hollow tree on level 47 or 37. Or you can enter a hollow tree from the Crimson Forest to get here as well. And you can exit by jumping in that huge water reservoir at the core of the level, or you can noclip into some of the different ancient ruins in the caves in order to be sent out of the level. Also, I just realized how hoarse my voice sounds. Apologies, I've been recording all day.
Backrooms level 24, or the moon, or even as it's sometimes called, the study, is a class 1 difficulty and is safe and secure with a small entity count, even though there's only one entity here. The level itself looks like a plastic model of the moon that's attached to other planets in the galaxy or solar system. At the very center of these plastic planet models is an LED sun. The weird thing is that the level is accurate to the size of the moon, sun, and planets from real life, but it's plastic. Interesting. The moon is the only planet that you can get to though, and it's around 14.6 million square miles in size. None of the planets here have any gravitational pull to each other, so it's not exactly like reality, but it's the same size to the person on the moon. And each of these planets is connected to each other and then to the sun with metal wires that slowly spins them around each other. The area around the model is really blurry, so you kind of can't tell what it is, but from what you can see, it looks like the inside side of a Victorian era style office or study room. You know what I'm talking about, those old style rooms where the guys sit with paintings on the walls and stuff. So if you haven't guessed by now, this level takes place on a model of the solar system inside of maybe a glass case. But the main theory is that everyone that gets here somehow shrinks down to smaller than an ant, I can only assume, when you instantly get here. That way you match the scale of the planet itself. So the moon actually isn't as big as the real moon. It's small, but you're also small, so it seems big. There's one base here from the BNTG group, and it's a plastic mine. Now pretty much they mine this plastic for building materials and weapon materials, stuff like that, and then they take it back to the level they came from. But this planet is pretty much an infinite source of plastic for weapons and stuff. There's one entity here, like I said, and he's actually not in the moon or in the solar system. He's outside in that Victorian era room, and he can only be seen sometimes. The miners here have named this guy Buford, or Beaufort, and very rarely he'll come near those planets and sit on a chair and read some kind of book. It looks like he's wearing a tuxedo and is bald. Kind of sounds like me. No one is sure if he's a faceling or if he's a person or what he is. It's too blurry to see, but sometimes Buford cleans the planets with a towel, and when this happens, any wanderer under that towel can be squished or affected by the quote-unquote earthquakes the cleaning causes. So watch out for that. To enter the level, you can jump through a moon painting on level 57, but you can also come here from level 1, which is the main entrance. The BNTG group that mines here hasn't actually said how that entrance from level 1 works, but it's what they use to get here and go back, so that's how you have to exit. You have to follow them out. Nice! So this level actually has two descriptions on the Wikidot. One of them is in writing on this paper kind of thing from the first person narrative of the person who discovered the level. And the other one is just the normal level description. So for ease of access, I'm going to read the normal level description instead of the written narrative one. But you can go check that out if you want to. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing. Level 25 is classified as a class 0 difficulty and is a safe level for the most part. The level itself looks like an old arcade that's been robbed, beaten, abandoned, weathered, you know, it's dilapidated. The level has huge empty rooms with old arcade machines everywhere inside. And there's dust on the floors, on the arcades, on the walls, everything, which leads people to believe that it's really old. There's also random shelves nailed into the wall, which is completely random. The arcade machines and games here are from the 1980s, and almost all of them have either been broken or cracked or ripped apart by something, and only about 1 in 1500 games even works. But the ones that do work can be used as exits from the level. If you put a coin into the game and then play it, you can be sent out of the level with that arcade machine. Like, it goes to Wherever you go, it'll follow. But, like I said, lots of the games are so old and broken that it's just iffy if they even work. There aren't any bases here in this massive abandoned arcade, and to enter it, you can find an arcade machine that somebody else used to exit on any given level, and then you can play that game to be sent here, and the machine will follow you. Or, you can find a janitor's closet on level 4, and you can walk into it to be sent here, and to exit the level, 
Just use an arcade machine, and it'll send you to one of these levels. Level 0, 5, 9, 10, 11, 19, 24, 29, 37, 50, 90, 108, 120, 141, 150, 165, 188, 201, 790, and 888. You got that? But yeah, that's it for the explanation. It's a really simple level. It's short and sweet. It's just a liminal, old, abandoned arcade. Classic backrooms, right? Level 26 is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is very unsafe, mainly due to there being some environmental changes and a ton of creatures chasing you. The level itself looks like a huge, but not infinite, urban household, but it's not infinite and that's one of the reasons it's so dangerous, because there's less space to run away from the creatures chasing you. The level has some of the same properties as level 0 does, because some of the rooms and hallways change and they'll just randomly segment themselves or glitch themselves in weird ways that normally wouldn't happen in real life. There are also random doors and random rooms and staircases that just glitch into walls or go right to dead ends, so it's really untelling what you're gonna see. And it's almost like houses are stitched together in some parts because it just a tons of different decorations just meet in weird places. The most dangerous hallways through the level are the claustrophobic and skinny ones because they're typically darker and they have more creatures in them trying to chase you. Furniture like tables and lamps and stuff can also randomly be placed into the side of walls or, or hanging from the ceilings or Stuff like that. All of this glitching stuff can change at any time, and it never stays the same for long. That's why it's dangerous. There are window entities here on this level that look out to what appears to be a backyard or the outside area. You can open the window, but if you go out there, then you can get your eyes melted by a blue mist. Nice. Side note here, I love how this sentence is written, quote, the mist is toxic, however, it will eventually melt eyes, end quote. Like, that's so funny to me. It's not toxic, but it melts your eyes? Okay. Items like liquid pain and even royal rations can randomly be found inside of the level as well, specifically in the refrigerators. And you can also find things like level keys and fire salt just laying around on tables. I guess since the level is dangerous, it's got good resources to balance it out. Now the entities that spawn here are the typical ones like windows, smilers, death moths, clumps, hounds, facelings, skin stealers. Whew, that's a mouthful. But the point is, this level is crawling with things that want to eat you. And on top of that, the level is changing its layout constantly based off of real life rooms. Literally each room in this level is a room from a real house or building from real life. And it can even change into your own house. Sometimes the entirety of the level will just change into a weird, demented version of your house, and the rooms will be weird and big, or yeah, it's goofy, trust me. There's no current outpost here, but there was one called the Engineers, and they just stockpiled a bunch of supplies on the level, but they haven't been heard from in forever, so we don't know where they're at. To enter this monster house level, you have to go to floor 1000 of level 13, and to exit, you can glitch through some of the already glitching furniture, or you can find a staircase that leads down to be sent to the basement level, which is an enigmatic level. Cool! Level called the Bunker Springs, or level 27. This level is classified as class 0, and it's a very peaceful but kind of small level. The actual level itself is infinite, but the accessible parts of the level where you can go are pretty small at around 200 feet or 18.6 meters in size actually. But the area you can go to is a huge hot spring full of very mineral rich water. Some people have even taken a drink of the water and they say that it makes you feel really calm and really empty headed and like your stress is completely gone. And they even get more energy too. The water temperature hovers at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32.2 degrees Celsius, which is about what a typical hot tub from real life is set to. High on the walls of the cavern, there are two holes that pour in new water to the spring, and there's a hole in the very corner under the water that will drain the water that's in there now, so it's constantly getting cleaned out with new water added, which is pretty cool since lots of people come here. On that note, apparently this level is pretty popular among people who are on level 11 specifically, since you can get to it really easily from there. The water gives a really therapeutic feeling to the person if they bathe in it for over an hour, and it can get rid of stress and make a person really calm, and it even can change your outlook on things and make you feel optimistic. Nice, dude. The water can also heal very small ailments like rashes or acne, 
and even small cuts, but it's not recommended to stay in the water for more than two hours, since if you do, you'll get dizzy and nauseous, and you're also not supposed to take up time for too long in there, since there's like a line of people waiting, but I'm taking as long as I want to, because it sounds pretty cool. There are no bases here, and you can enter this level by turning a shower on the hottest setting and closing your eyes. If you do this, then you'll be teleported to the tunnel, which is slightly above the pool, and then you can just walk down some stairs to get into the water. To leave, you just have to walk to the corner of the pool area where Meg has built a staircase that goes into the tunnel that the water flows out of, and you can just walk down that tunnel and you'll be sent back to where you came from. Cool. So pretty much a level you can go to just to chill on the hot spring, where the water can actually heal you too. Nice. Cool. The 28th level of the backrooms is classified as a class 1 question mark difficulty and is seemingly safe and secure with a minimal entity count, but all that stuff has question marks next to it, so who knows. The level's landscape is really similar to a real life fields landscape, except the sky is a deep blue color, and there's no moon or sun, just light. The ground itself is also dark colored with hints of blue, and the level is known for the castle in the middle. This castle is named Stormstone Keep, and I'll get into it in a second. But it's the only building on the level, and it's also the safest spot to go. How cool is that? It doesn't actually say how big the level is, but it does say that roughly three miles from the castle is the safe zone. So don't go any further than the safe zone, because it's dangerous. And for that matter, you probably shouldn't even leave the castle if you can help it because apparently there's some really weird stuff that happens on this level. You can tell there's some weird stuff because of the way it's written on the wiki dot, because some of the words are marked out by the blue knight. I'll talk about him in a second. The castle itself is a slightly worn down and falling apart castle that seems like it's from medieval European times. It's also on a hill in the middle of the level's main valley. And the level itself is pretty much situated between mountains on all sides, and there's the valley in the middle with the castle in the middle of the valley. The valley itself has weeds and plants that grow in it, which are all pretty similar to real life plants, but the big difference is that everything here is really flammable and can catch on fire easily. Each plant also has different levels of blue in it, so there's different shades of it throughout everything. If a plant is ripped out of the ground, it won't regrow, and if you burn any plants, then a toxic blue smoke will come out of the plant, uh, so don't do that. And look Listen to Smokey Bear. The entire level is in a valley, like I said, and on each side of the valley are these unnaturally huge mountains and they literally go straight up. It's hard to climb. In fact, you probably can't even climb it. They're so tall that you can't even see the tops of them, and no one knows what's near them or by them or on them because anywhere outside of the three mile safe zone is extremely dangerous. So the best thing to do is just avoid it. Outside of that safe zone, it's known that the ground and everything else is made out of a rock called storm stone. This stuff is really flammable and it's explosive if it's barely touched. It's kind of like a landmine. The rock itself is completely black, kind of like obsidian, but darker. And if you walk on this storm stone without the right equipment, you could literally just be stepping on a landmine and explode. So don't. On top of the storm stone, there's real storms that happen outside of the safe zone, and these storms have heavy, loud thunder and lightning, and this lightning can strike the ground and cause the storm stone to blow up. So it's just like a wasteland of volatile rocks pretty much out there. I definitely wouldn't be walking out there. The only entity here is the Blue Knight, which apparently is some guy that takes the shape of a hollow set of blue armor. He moves like a human and can speak literally any language that any wanderer can. And on the wiki dot, there's like this entire little story written by the Blue Knight himself about himself. So if you want to read up on him for a little bit, go check that out. But in the middle of that story about himself, he says that all the storms and bad stuff on the level is caused by him from the sense of dread he feels. And then he says he doesn't know why it happens, but he tries to make it stop, but he can't. He seems kind of sus to me. I'm gonna be real. The Meg operative that first met this 
this blue knight guy is named Sarah, and apparently, by the blue knight's story, he really likes her. I don't know. There aren't any bases here, just the Stormstone Keep Castle, which itself doesn't have any food or anything but it is safe to stay in. To enter, you can find a painting of a blue countryside in level five and then no clip through it. And to exit, you can't, since the blue knight doesn't want you to. Okay, yeah, that's sus. Also, he took someone's phone to write the entry and that person hasn't been heard from, so starting to not trust this level. Backrooms level 29 is classified as a class 4 difficulty and is triple U, or unsafe, unsecure, and has unknown entities. Off to a great start, right? The level is written in a pretty narrative style format, where one person is writing it and is documenting the entirety of the level. So I'm going to try my best to summarize it in the Brugley way. Here we go. Level 29 is a landmass surrounded by oceans, so an island. And the island has huge, rough cliffs and sharp, jagged rocks that are made out of metal. And these metal-topped mountains kind of surround the people that live on the inside of the island from the people that live on the outside of the island. And they act as sort of a wall to protect the people that live in the villages. There are also multiple freshwater springs of almond water that flow down from the mountainsides to feed the people who live here. The oceans that surround the island are called the outer areas. The places on the island but outside of the mountains are called the outer circle. And the places on the island but inside of the mountains are called the inner circle. So pretty much people live in the inner circle and then unknown stuff lives in the outer circle. Inside of the mountains, there are small villages and towns and open farmlands that grow food. The huts that make up these towns are mostly made out of wood and the majority of people who live on this level live in these huts. Outside of the mountains, the main structures there are watchtowers that are supposedly there to guard against outside threats. And those outside threats are sometimes seen by people who venture outside of the safety of the mountains and they're described as quote, strange and enormous entities, so there's no telling what's out there. Even further outside of the mountains is the ocean that surrounds the island. The ocean itself is unnaturally strong and breaks almost every ship that's put into it. And the bad news for you is that the only exit is in the ocean, and no one can seem to get to it because the water just breaks the ship instantly. So you're pretty much stuck here for all we know. The people who live on the inside of the islands and inside of the mountain are split up into different groups who all live together pretty peacefully. Some of them have governments, some of them don't. It just depends on what you like. Now the main settlement in the very middle of the island is called Hyperia which is the level's name, and it's like the main hub of the level. It's the central location where people from other villages can come to meet, talk to each other, kind of like a capital city, but not really. The people that live in the town get to do whatever they want because there's no rules or laws, so that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to talk about the people that actually live here and how they're split up. There's a total of around 25,000 inhabitants of the island that live inside of it, and they live in around 250 groups. But 17,000 of those inhabitants aren't human, which is kind of creepy. They're actually like facelings in a way, but they're not facelings, they're just semi-human. The island itself is around 836,000 miles in size and it's mostly safe to live on except the places outside of the mountains where those strange giant creatures live and the mountains that form the border around the villages are full of caves and caverns that have copper and other metals inside of them and the people that live here can mine those metals to sell the forests on the islands are full of weird trees with wood that's stronger than metal. Pretty much, this place to me sounds like Skull Island from the King Kong movie. Now, the scariest part of the level entry is at the ending because that part says there's a kraken, a giant kraken, that lives deep inside of the oceans of the level. It's supposed to be the size of an island and has only been seen on one of the few successful sea explorations that have happened on the level. And this kraken has been deemed dangerous to the entirety of the backrooms, not just to this level. It could wipe out the entire island with everybody on it with one swipe of a tentacle because it's literally as big as the island. Around the ocean where the Kraken is sleeping, the water is full of whirlpools and stuff like that, and that'll suck any boats into the water if you get close. So the main thing is just avoid the ocean. Actually, avoid this level. 
As far as other entities go, there aren't any dangerous ones on the inside of the mountains. Just a bunch of friendly ones that look like normal people, like I said. And since not much is known about the ocean, except the Kraken, no one really knows what lurks deeper in the water. To enter the level, you have to go as far as possible out into level 7 until the sky turns pink, and then you'll appear on some docks in level 29. And as I said earlier, there is no exit that you can go to on the level, but it's somewhere out in the ocean if there is. And every attempt that's been made to find it has failed. Backrooms level 31 is classified as a class 2 difficulty and is unsafe with a low entity count. The level itself is made up of a couple of different parts, but the main area is a looping roller rink and the second main area is an arcade. Most people who get sent to this level do end up in that roller rink area, but the arcade area is less dangerous and some people get sent there first. Now the roller rink area is pretty dangerous because there is an entity there called the Lover that can be found and I'm going to talk more about her later. There are other entities in the main roller rink area like Hounds, Facelings, and a level exclusive entity called the Coach as well. Throughout this zone there is soft pop music playing over the speakers and at the DJ booth there's sometimes a Facelene just standing there. To the side of the rink, there is a little food court that's like a typical roller skating concession stand. You can get food and you can get water there. And the carpet on this level is that classic retro carpet with stars and planets and glowing stuff. You know what I'm talking about. However, the carpet is actually wet or moist in most spots, just like the carpet on level zero, which I find interesting. So like I said earlier, there is an entity here called the Lover. Now this one's a pretty crazy one because she looks like a facelene, but instead of not having a face like facelings do, this entity will replicate the face of someone from real life that you've loved at one point. Now the entity is supposedly a woman, but has also been seen as a male, so it really just depends on who's interacting with it. If you go up to her, she'll ask you to skate with her, and then she'll start talking about good memories that you had in real life with whatever the face of the person she's wearing. But whatever you do, make sure you do not accept this offer to go skating, because if you do, you'll be put in a trance that causes you to skate forever until you fade away. Just like the love you once had for that person. That's really creepy. The lover will instantly disappear if you say no to her asking to skate with you. So, just say no. But I mean, that'd be really creepy. You know, you imagine you just pull up to a backrooms level and you see literally like a person you loved in real life just standing there. I mean, that would creep me out. If you follow the smell of food, you will be led to that food court area, which is also next to the break room area, which is an exit. The food is safe to eat, and there's actually a soda machine there as well, but it only dispenses almond water, no matter what you click on. There's also a facelink that works behind this counter, and if you ask it to give you food or water, it'll do so. It's typically pretty friendly, except if you ask about the back rooms, and then it'll stop giving you food, and it'll just walk away as if it's angry or something. Interesting. The area where you get your size of skates is where you can find the entity called the Coach. Now, this entity is an intelligent faceling type creature who will lead you to the exit of the level if you ask him nicely. There are not any bases here, although you could theoretically have one. And to enter, you can go through a wooden door from levels 2, 3, or 27, or 6 to end up here. And to exit, you can noclip into any arcade game to be sent to level 40. Or you can go to the food court area and then to the employee lounge right next to it. And you'll be sent to level 176. Cool. So Backrooms Level 32 is classified as a Class 5 difficulty and is really unsafe and really unsecure. There's also a powerful entity living in it, which we'll get into more later. So the level itself looks like a constantly dark forest that goes forever in every direction. The sky is dark with no stars and only has a single crescent moon in it, which is the only light source of the entire level. The forests are filled with dark trees that have skeletons hanging from the branches. That's, that's creepy. 
The bones act like wind chimes and they'll clatter together whenever a breeze is blowing. And some people have even claimed that they've heard the skeletons talking to them and they say stuff like about their old lives or they tell the future and prophesy the future. No one's confirmed this, but it's just what some people say and honestly, I really like that idea. Other than these skeletons, there's one entity that walks the dark forest and she appears in two forms. The first form is called the Bell, which is a pale woman with black hair and a nice dress on. She has skeleton face paint on and she's, you know, pretty, pretty nice. Or is she? The Bell doesn't talk, but she lures wanderers into following her, kind of like a siren does to pirates. You know, sirens would lure pirates into the water and then drown them. Well, that's what this thing does too. If a wanderer does end up following the bell, she will lead them deeper into the woods to her other form, the Skeleton Queen. This form is a really tall, skeleton-y figure in an old black dress. The entity is really powerful and can somehow control the entire domain of the level. Like she just can control everything. If you're kind to her and you listen to what she has to say, then you might be let go. But if you aren't, then she'll tell the trees to grab you and just to rip you apart because she can control everything. Or if she really doesn't like you, she might even fake letting you go. And then while you're running away, she just opens a hole in the ground right under you and you fall into it. And then you get buried by the soil. That's that's creepy, man. My advice is to not follow the bell in the first place, no matter how much you want to, unless you want to get eaten by a giant skeleton. As of right now, there isn't a known entrance to level 32, and it seems like the only way to get there is to get lost in a dark forest on some other level, but no one knows for sure. Weirdly though, some people have said that they've no-clipped from real life directly into this level, which would suck really bad considering most people actually go to level 0 first. I feel like that one would be significantly less scary than this one. And the only way to exit the level is to see those hanging skeletons and then get lured by the bell to see the skeleton queen. The only way you can leave is to just be nice to her and your life's literally in her hands. If you're kind to her and she allows you to leave, then you'll just be cool. You'll wake up in a different forest on another backrooms level. But if you're rude to her or short with her or something, well then you're probably gonna get eaten by a tree. No lie. But if you do get sent to another forest on another level, you'll wake up and you'll remember what just happened, but to you, it'll feel like it was a dream and not reality. But deep down, you will know that it wasn't a dream. There's also a little story at the end of the entry that's pretty much a girl trying to find the skeleton queen so she can bring back her unalived lover, like back to life, in exchange for her own life, and it works. So that's cool, I guess. Level 33 is classified as a class 2 difficulty, so it's not too dangerous at the start, but it does get dangerous. The level itself is a creepily empty shopping mall. The stores inside of the mall were actually stores from real life, you know, like the typical ones, but most of them are completely empty besides a few random items. Some of the stores as well as restaurants are closed off completely by those gate things that you've all seen before, but unlike the gates from real life, these gates cannot be opened no matter what. And for the most part, all the food courts in this mall are completely empty, but if you are lucky, you might run into one that has food. When you're first sent to this level, you'll probably run into a random hound or a duller or a death rat, but it's not too likely since the entrance area is pretty safe. But as I said earlier, the further you go into the level, the more dangerous the creatures get and the more dangerous the environment gets. The mall itself will start to deteriorate more and more the further you go, eventually to the point where the floor will completely be flooded and the walls will be peeled and cracked and the lights will stop working and then eventually just everything's trying to eat you. Yeah, but I'm gonna get into detail on what that means in a second. The good news is for you, it's been somewhat mapped out where you should go and where you should avoid so you don't accidentally go there and your old pal Brugly is about to tell you right where to go and right where to not go. When you first land in this level, to you it'll just look like a normal tile floored mall that's squeaky clean. This clean and dry area lasts for around 50 miles because at that 50 mile mark is when the corrosion state starts. 
This is when the walls will start to gradually show mold and scratches, and some tiles will be cracked or broken, and the lights will start to flicker once every few hours. So it's not too bad yet, just a little worn down, but it's about to get pretty bad. This corrosion state is also when smilers and other entities will start to show up and just start to punch you down. So make sure just to watch out for all the dark areas. Now at 100 miles in, the entire section of walls will be completely ripped out and mold will be all over where they were. And not in patches like the 50 mile marker, this mold will be everywhere. The water will be around two inches deep on the floor now, and the lights will flicker once every few minutes instead of once every few hours. And there are a bunch more entities here as well. At this point, it's gonna start snowballing and getting completely bad, so just buckle up. 200 miles in, everything is just terrible. The mold is thick on the floor, the walls, the ceilings. There's moss hanging from the ceilings, the water is two feet deep now, and the lights constantly are flickering off and on, which would drive me insane if I'm gonna be honest. At this point, they're just turned off completely for several minutes at a time, and then they'll just randomly flicker back on for a few seconds. This is when your sanity will start to drop pretty badly, and I, I don't blame you. And lots of auditory and visual hallucinations will start to happen in this 200 miles out zone. 300 miles into the level is when the weeds start growing up through the floor, up through the water, and stand at around 6 feet tall. And the water itself is now 5 feet deep, and the lights are always off, but will flick on once every several hours. And those hallucinations from earlier will start to lure you into smiler traps. So don't listen to what your brain is telling you. And this part actually reminds me of that one SpongeBob episode with the magic conch. You know, when they were all lost in that huge kelp jungle. That's what I imagine this part looks like. 500 miles in and the floors and lights don't even exist anymore. And there's just fire on the ground where the water used to be. 750 miles in and the walls are just pipes and moss and everything is just so overgrown and there's entities all around you and those hallucinations aren't even hallucinations at this point they're real and everything is just so overgrown you can barely see now after this point there's only been one person to get to the thousand mile marker and they said that the weeds are over 20 feet tall and there's just black voids for walls and floors and somehow you're just walking on it and there's hundreds of entities in the weeds and he ran back when a horde of entities started chasing him. So he recommends to not go any further than the thousand mile mark, but there are some groups that are trying to go further. I'm not sure why they're trying to go, but hey, you know, whatever, whatever they want to do. To enter this level, you have to get into a shopping cart from level 11, and then you'll be sent here, and you can exit by going through the same door you came through from level 11, or you can get to level 45 by entering an office in the mall. So starting off, I'm doing level 34, which is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is very dangerous. I mean, it's an entity filled sewer system with water. How could it not be dangerous? The level itself is a claustrophobically small tunnel that's only around 4 feet tall, so you're gonna have to crouch if you walk through it. There's no light source on the level itself, so if you want to come here, you're gonna want to bring a flashlight so you can see. The main entity you're gonna have to worry about as well is Smilers, since they like to hide in dark habitats, and this level is the very definition of a dark habitat. The tunnel itself is full of dirty water, it doesn't say if it's sewage or not, because uh, that would be nasty if it was, but the thing that makes this level so weird is that no one knows how the Smilers stay alive, like what do they eat? It's a small enclosed level with no other things in there, you know? The level also kind of reminds me of that tunnel from Indiana Jones when they were going into like the tunnels under France or whatever, you know? There are not any bases or outposts here, since you can't set anything up in a 4 foot tunnel, and to enter, you can go inside a sewer grate on level 11, don't know why you want to do that, but oh well. To exit, you can find an area where two tunnels meet, like a junction area, and when you find that place, you can just dive right into the water and swim straight down, and you'll end up on either level 7 or level negative 2. And you can exit also by climbing up a ladder to a sewer grate and opening it, which will take you to level 9, 81, or 11. But yeah, that was the entire entry for level 34. It's short, and that's why I'm putting level 35 in this video as well. But I think I would hate this level because I really don't like claustrophobic spaces, and I also don't like walking around in dirty water. And that's 
literally all this level is. Plus, there's creatures hiding in the dark that want to eat you. So I tried to skip this level in any way possible. On to level 35. Level 35 is classified as a class 2 difficulty and is unsafe with a low entity count. The level itself looks like a car park that's dimly lit, but it also has different colored lights throughout the level. The actual parking area is just surrounded by a completely black abyss, which should be avoided completely because no one knows what even is out there. Even though there isn't much light inside of the complex, there's the light that's here is a bunch of different colors like green and blue, and there's also the typical fluorescent lights as well. In total, there are six floors with a roof on top, so the level is not infinite, and it's actually one of the smallest levels in the back rooms. For the most part, the parking lots are completely empty. Hardly any cars. But there are some random cars around, which can make weird things happen once you get in them. For instance, if you get into a 2015 Ford Fusion, well then nothing happens. But if you get into an ambulance, sirens will start to blast and you'll be sent to level 14. If you get into a Humvee, then you'll be sent to level 49. If you get into one of those funeral hearses, then you'll just instantly unalive. So, <laughs> don't do that. If you get into a Caprice, then loud engines will start and the music will just blast so loud until you get out. And if you get into a school bus, then you might get mauled by a Smiler because that's where most of the Smilers are on the level. And there's a couple of other ones like Jeeps and ice cream trucks that should probably be just completely avoided. The good news is, is that there's a ton of exits in the level. But the exits that aren't the cars need to be avoided because if you get near one, like an exit door or something like that, then the entire parking lot will fill up with moving cars that will try to run you over. Now if this does happen and you notice you just stepped really close to an exit door, you gotta run to the first parked car you see, except if it's a hearse, and get into it so you can get out of there because you don't want to get trampled by a car. Trust me. There are not any bases here and you can enter by breaking through a brick wall on level 34 and you can exit through one of the car exits that I talked about. Backrooms level 36, aka the airport, is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe with a few entities around. It looks like an airport from real life, except this one is completely empty, minus a few stores and vending machines laying around. Some of those stores, or restaurants in some cases, are from real life. However, you can't really eat the food from these places because it could give you food poisoning and you don't want to risk that. The vending machines on this level only give out almond water even if there's other brands on the front of the vending machine. So like if it says Coke, it'll still give out only almond water. And that seems to be a trend in the back rooms since this kind of thing happens on a ton of different levels. You'll see a regular looking vending machine that only gives out almond water. The airport says it's located in Houston, Texas, even though it's not in Texas, it's in the back rooms, so I'm, I don't know. There are doors that say exit on the side of the airport, but you shouldn't go through them because they can lead to dangerous levels or even undetermined and undiscovered levels. All of the terminals inside of this airport have planes outside of them, and the brands on these planes are from real life too. So you got Delta, American Airlines, that kind of stuff. But they're all empty. There's actually a newly discovered area to level 36 too, and it's called the airport basement. It's pretty much just a huge location under the main floor with no windows or much light, and it goes on forever. There's this train tram system on the border of this area, and it'll take you to different parts of it, even though there's nothing else, except staircases. And these staircases lead up, but they don't really go up. Instead, they just go up and down infinitely, kind of like the end level, which is weird because that makes no sense. As far as bases and outposts go, there's one called Flight 914, which is actually a community made up of people from the real life Pan Am Flight 914 that disappeared in 1955. This group is located near the American Airlines gate, the first one you see, which is pretty cool that there's real missing people in the back rooms. That could explain some stuff. There are other small groups throughout the level as well, since it's infinite, and there's also infinite almond water, so it's not too bad of a place to stay. To enter this level, you have to go on the metro on any of the levels it's available on. Specifically, it mainly works from levels 9 to 11, and you can exit by walking through the airplane terminals to the planes themselves. The American gates 
tend to lead to level four and the delta gates tend to lead to level zero and the other airlines they kind of just have random levels they send you to so it's not for sure or mapped out which ones you go to and if you notice that there's an unmarked airline don't go through that gate because we have no idea what's going to happen to you so yeah that was level 36 and infinite airports with planes and stuff like that kind of reminds me of level infinity but less crazy now let's go to level 37 shall we Backrooms level 37 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is pretty unsafe. It takes on the appearance of an infinite jungle with trees that aren't really recognizable from real life, but they kind of look normal. It's whatever. These trees grow weird fruits that are actually safe to eat, which is kind of neat. And the skies on this level are a deep purple color, but can sometimes change to blue or green depending on the time of day. The forest itself is split by a bunch of dirt paths that sometimes can lead from the main path off to different directions. And these directions can be dangerous because they haven't been fully explored yet, but some of them, like the ones I'm about to talk about, have been explored, and we know what they're about. If you go left at any path intersection that you run into, you'll end up at the waterfall. No matter which path on the left that you take, you'll end up at the waterfall. Obviously, it's unknown how anyone can get to the waterfall by just going left, but it's the back rooms. I mean, <laughs> nothing makes sense here. If you stay straight on this main path, you'll be sent to an area where there's temples, and these temples are abandoned. They look kind of like Mayan temples from real life, but they're old, and they might have even predated real life Mayan temples. On the ground near these, there are a bunch of abandoned little camps from old outposts that are just decaying and rotting away. There's also some stone tablets with text carved in them, and these texts explain the history of these lost Mayans. In fact, the people who made these pyramids called themselves the Lost Mayans, which is pretty cool. If you go right on any of the path intersections, then you'll show up to a wooden cabin. This cabin is where the main entity from this level lives and goes to. And those entities are facelings. The facelings themselves look like they're explorers from the 1800s, and they carry really old weapons and stuff like that. I'm assuming they look kind of like that guy from Tarzan. But anyways, the Facelings main base is this cabin that I just talked about. It's on the right side of the path. And if you go in the cabin, you won't be able to see any of the Facelings that you just saw walk into it. Because when you walk through the doors, four things could happen to you. You could walk in and it could be a completely normal cabin with nothing wrong. Or you could walk in and you could just end up in level negative one. Or all your bones will shatter and you'll have a heart attack and dissolve. Cool. The last thing that could happen is that there will be a bar right in front of you and you'll be served by a random stranger. I mean, that's that's pretty weird. I, I got to say that's pretty strange, even for the back rooms. So just don't walk in the cabin. The other parts of the jungle that aren't the temples or the cabin or the waterfalls, it's all glitchy and there's just weird glitches and non-Euclidean properties that happen that don't really make any sense. Like trees can just be floating or they can fall over and then stand back up. It's, it's crazy. This is also where the majority of the creatures live on this level, like death moths, dollars, skin stealers, and wretches as well as other normal jungle life, like monkeys and stuff. But to me, I, I'm not sure how they're gonna live there since the jungle glitches, but if they do, well, more power to them. To enter level 37, you can find an empty park on level 11 and roll in the grass until you're sent here. <laughs> cool. To exit, you can fall asleep and you'll wake up on level negative two, or you can walk towards the sunrise in the morning and you'll be sent out of the level. Neat. Backrooms level 38 is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and has an entity infestation. Ah, the best kind of levels. This level is unstable, glitchy, and it's a conglomeration of all Backrooms levels from level 0 to levels 37. Kinda like you took the first 38 levels and crumbled them up together like a piece of paper and you ended up with this level. So 0 to 37 are folded together and are mixed up to form this level, 38. And it's thought that this happens because the levels themselves typically don't have any defined structure. So they're almost like a liquid in space and time with no borders. And that means that this is the point where they all meet and all swirl together. It's kind of like when two oceans meet together, level 38 would be right at that border point. You got that? 
So this level has some of the properties from those first levels that make it unique. One property it has is that it's got the darkness from level 6, so everything's extremely dark, and it's also got the decay of the walls and structures from level 33. And there are other unique quirks about the level as well, but it all just depends on where you're at. Level 38 as a whole is split up into two different areas so that it can be better understood and mapped and tracked. The first area is called the interior, which is pretty much the term that's used for any of the locations that are inside of buildings on the level. These interior rooms are the most common areas of the level, but no good quality pictures can be taken because every place in the interior has the level 12 effect, which blurs and distorts and causes pictures to be terrible quality, so that's pretty handy, isn't it? The second area is called the exterior, which obviously refers to the outside areas of the level. So if there's like a park level or a forest level, it would be classified as the exterior. And these areas are way more uncommon because there's only a few levels that take place outdoors in the first 38 levels. So the ones that do are a part of the exterior. There actually used to be a base here called BNTG Outpost Merchant, and it was set up right when this level was found with the goal to provide almond water, supplies, food to anyone who came to the level. But now the outpost is abandoned because of how unstable the entire area is and because of the entity attacks. That didn't help either. To enter this crumbled together level, you have a chance just by wandering around any levels from level 0 to 37. You never really know. And to exit, you can wander around the level until it starts to change into a more stable zone, and then you'll be sent to a level depending on if you were in the interior or the exterior. Cool. Level 39, aka the Enchanted Forest. That's a very Disney princessy name, so I hope it's good. This level is a class zero difficulty, and it was discovered in 1988 by an anonymous wanderer. Cool. The level is made up of curvy dirt roads that go through a thick forest, specifically an oak forest. The level actually isn't that big and is only around 190 miles or 300 kilometers in size. It's also in the shape of a circle and not a square. The level has no day or night cycle, and it's just stuck at a constant dusk time. The pathways on the level are around 6.6 .6 feet wide, or around 2 meters, and can be really confusing if you're not paying attention, because they randomly curve and curl back and you can lose your place if you're not keeping your eyes open. Like I said, the trees inside the forest are oak trees, and they can't be destroyed, broken, removed, moved at all because their roots are physically fused with the ground of this level somehow. They don't just have roots in the ground, they're like intertwined with the core of the level. Nice. The landscape is also pretty hilly, and there's random ponds scattered around. People who have been here say that the level gives a random feeling of calmness and serenity, and some even say that the level gives them intense nostalgia, even though they've never seen the level or been to a place like this in real life. The only dangerous thing about this level is that it's so comforting and calm that wanderers can get entranced by it and forget to sleep or drink or eat so they might unalive themselves from dehydration or starvation. But all you have to do to avoid that is to drink some almond water and the effects will immediately reverse. On the outskirts of the level there are these areas called the borders and they're pretty much really dangerous areas to go in. They have heavy winds and thunderstorms, and sometimes there's even tornadoes, and the temperatures are also way colder in those areas than in the main area. The sky is also darker and cloudier. So pretty much what I'm saying is, don't go to the border of this level. It's lame. The real homies just sit and chill in the woods. There are no bases or outposts here, but it is possible to make one as long as you take into consideration the fact that you're going to have to drink almond water so you don't get entranced. You can enter this level by going into the woods of level 37 and finding the transition into the trees of this level, level 39, and then you keep walking and you'll eventually get here. There are also three other ways to enter, but you have to be past the level to enter it, so here they are. To exit, you can just noclip through a hill to be sent to level 63, or you can noclip through a weird looking oak tree. And if those two don't work, you can use one of the other seven ways it lists to exit. There's nine exits, so, I mean, it's pretty easy to leave. 
So yeah, this one's just a nice calm forest. I mean, literally, that's the definition, the epitome, if you will, of a safe backrooms level. Backrooms level 40 is yet another level that looks like an arcade. Except this time, stuff gets really weird, I'm not gonna lie. The actual level has the typical arcade look from the mid 80s, but the games themselves are what make the level crazy. There's also vending machines around and food vendors and areas like that that give out food and drinks, and the food and drinks are not almond water, people. I repeat, there is no almond water on this level. There's never been any seen. That's gotta be a first for any level in the backrooms because what is, what is the backrooms without almond water? Normally the food's safe to eat, but a lot of it is covered in a really weird green glowing liquid called Star Fowler's Universal Sauce. Uh, yeah, I'll get into that in a second. Apparently the sauce can taste like any food ever, but there are some people who have consumed it that have ended up losing their minds and going crazy and thinking they're in some kind of group. Uh, I'll get into that later. So eat with caution. Around the level, there are tons of TV stations that play commercials for random objects. Now, these objects are really, really weird and they don't really make much sense, but I'm gonna read some of the commercials now. The first one says, a new galactic size of adventure and a system-wide selection of tastes. Introducing General Stare Flare's Universal Sauce, a whole new world of flavor, the perfect addition for every Space Cadet's adventures to the stars. Only at Roller Rockin' Pizza, call 404040, you know, says it over and over again, to get a chance at winning one of the five prizes, including the one-time General Star Flare's figurine ready for action. Sign up now at, and that's when the commercial cuts off, to a black screen. Interesting. And there's more that have the similar style to that, like this one that says, Tickets are open to see Mickey playing at Moly's Comedy Club and Bar. Feel free to hang around as long as you'd like. We have a lot of cool stuff planned for you. Just look for the sign and you'll find us. See you at the party. So yeah, none of that really makes any sense. And what makes even less sense is why commercials are playing on a level where there aren't many people. Like, who's the target audience? What are the commercials trying to reach? I don't know. The arcade games themselves actually work here, and the games can range from Rampage to Space Invaders, just a whole wide swath. And there's also some games that aren't even from the real world, and they don't have a name, and they have some really strange properties. It's almost like they got created just for this level. There's one called Yoinkers 2. It's a game where you throw the opponent in a river using a ball, but if you throw the ball hard enough in game, it would literally crack the screen of the arcade machine you're using. So somehow it connects to real life from the game? And that happens a lot with these games that are specific to this level. They have a lot of anomalous properties. There's a game called Topple Top that has a character in the game that recognizes if you've played this game before and they'll talk to you. And there's a racing game called The Grand Finale that after 12 rounds, it cuts to a blank screen and it says, why? I mean, it's probably best to just avoid these games. I don't know if they're like sentient, but it's creepy. Why would a game have near human intelligence, you know? Some of these games are being played by a weird entity called the customers, which is kind of like a force or an energy and not necessarily a physical thing, but people who have tried to contact this force have ended up sick and woozy, so. Past this arcade area is a small bowling alley place with the same decorations as where you just were. And the food here has the exact same sauce as before and everything seems to work just like a normal bowling alley. Even further past this alley, there's another place that looks like a bathroom or break room area. It's kind of run down, but it's really creepy and liminal space looking. The further you go into the level is where you find the exit. It's a weird looking exit hallway with a revolving door at the end, and that's how you leave the level. There are actually a couple of groups here that have set up shop. Like there's a BNTG group, and then there's a group called the Scrambler Outpost. And the Scrambler Outpost, they're extremely hostile, and they raid other people's camps and try to steal their stuff, so. And then there's the group of crazy people who ate the green sauce and just went off the deep end. Their group is called General Starflare Space Cadets, and they're crazy, so. To enter this level, you can find an arcade machine in level 5 and play it to be sent here, or use one of the other entrances listed. There's a ton. To exit, you can go through that revolving door at the end of the hallway that I was talking about just now to be sent to level 9, 10, or 11. Or you can use one of the other 11 exits listed. Cool. Cool. 
So Backrooms Level 41 is classified as a Class 4 difficulty and is very unsafe with a medium entity count. The level itself looks like a really dark sewage or underground tunnel system, specifically a concrete tunnel system. It's split up into different rooms, which I'll get into in a second. Loud whale noises are constantly echoing across the concrete walls, and when I say constantly, I mean constantly. Like, they're always just blasting the screams of whales. On top of these noises, there's also a species of huge lizard hominoid creatures that live in the shadows. They specifically stay in the areas with the deepest amount of water, and they're very, very hostile if you go up to them. Most of the level is dark, so it's important to bring a flashlight with you if you want to see anything. And I would say the biggest quirk about this level is that each room that I mentioned actually changes when someone leaves it. So if you go into a specific room and then walk out, you won't be able to go into that room again <laughs> because it won't be the exact same room. It'll be different. And no two rooms ever look alike. All of this means that the level is literally impossible to map out, so there's no maps or any kind of idea where anything is is because it changes all the time. The water in this level is normally pretty shallow, like mid shin high, but in some spots it can get up to waist deep. And this is where those lizard humans live. An explorer who made it to the level said that there are many things watching you, but no one's for sure if that's true or if the dude was just paranoid or somewhat of both, but there are lizard people here, so I'd, I'd say there are many things watching you. There are two main stages that this level does go through though, a red and a blue stage. When the red stage happens, the entities will be passive, and when the blue stage happens, the entities will try to eat you. I mean, it's literally simple. It's like red light, green lights, but with entities playing with your life, pretty much. There aren't any bases here, since the rooms are always changing, and there's water, and there's lizard people, and to enter this level, you can find a door labeled sewage, from level 11 and walk into it and to exit well that's where it gets tricky some people said that it can just randomly happen and some people say that you can leave by no clipping through a room that has a ball pit so who knows So Backrooms of a 42, or The Horizon, with a Y, is classified as a Class 5E difficulty, which means that the environment itself is the most dangerous part. The level looks like a huge expanse of thick forests and fields, with one singular massive volcano in the very middle of it all. The entire level is extremely volatile and chemically, and the atmosphere is very, very corrosive and dangerous. The forests on this level are so thick and the canopy for the trees is so thick that almost no light reaches the actual ground. But somehow, all the plants and stuff still grow even without light, which is kind of weird. Now, since this land is so thick with trees and other vegetation, it's kind of hard to explore and map out, and the environment itself has a bunch of really weird features that make it even more dangerous than a normal forest, but I'll touch on those later. As I just said, the atmosphere is very reactive active, and because of this, you shouldn't bring any fire or like make a torch or anything like that, but you can bring a flashlight, and in fact, you're gonna need a flashlight because it's so dark. Even if you just so much as start a fire with a single spark, the area around it will turn into like a fireball, and then will explode a few seconds later and cause everything to catch on fire in the vicinity of it. So not fun. There's also frequent acid rainstorms that happen on this level, which can last for pretty long periods of time actually. Obviously the rain is toxic and if you come into contact with it, it can burn you or even worse and you definitely should avoid drinking it or having it get inside your body at all. Time as we know it doesn't actually work on this level and if you bring a watch or a clock to here, it'll just freeze and stop working. And no one really knows why, but just a weird quirk of the level. The best place to hide during the acid rainstorms are these random caves that are dotted in the hills of the level. Since the ground is so rocky and hilly, there are several caves, so if it starts to rain, you gotta run for one of those because you don't want to get burned. The temperature on the ground level is actually cold. It's so cold, in fact, that you could freeze, and it stays at around 32 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 to 8 degrees Celsius 
obvious, so you're gonna have to bundle up with clothes in order to not get hypothermia. In contrast to that, the temperature above the trees is so dangerously hot and can reach up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius. So I guess it's kind of good that the trees are guarding you from that heat. And that huge volcano in the very middle of the level is always active. It's a stratovolcano and the base of it has tons of jagged lava areas where there's pools and there's hardened lava and magma and the entire landscape around it is so volatile and hot and blowing up and steaming and stuff like that that it's just very dangerous to even walk on there's also a bunch of earthquakes in this area at the base uh, because of the magma underground and that constant activity of the volcano releases heat and gases into the air which makes it so dangerous to breathe or to light a fire since it's literally just flammable and it's not recommended to stay here long without the right gear like a gas mask or something like that the volcano also randomly shoots rocks out of the middle of it into the air and they'll just land randomly in the forest. These things are like huge boulders that are on fire and they're very very dangerous considering that it happens a lot and you can't really see where it's gonna land because the trees block the sky so you better hope you're not under it when it falls. So now I'm going to talk about a special effect on this level called the Horizon Effect. Pretty much, it's a really weird anomaly that happens when you get to the level for the first time. If you walk far away from where you enter, you'll be rewinded back kind of like a movie or something. And when this happens, it means that you hit the border of the level. So the horizon is the border. And once you hit the border and get teleported back to the spawn, you'll start to feel like you're going crazy and start kind of acting irrational, kind of like you just drank alcohol or something. But after a few hours, this effect will slowly go away. But for those hours of you having the effect, uh, you think you're losing it. No one knows why this effect happens or why it happens just when you first get to the level, but it's the back rooms, man. Anything goes. There's barely any other life forms on this level besides the plants and trees there's actually only a few little mammals and insects that live in those caves from earlier and they live far away from the volcano because they're not trying to get roasted by lava so other than those giant volcano rocks that get launched into the sky there are other anomalous things that happen here there are random lava pools that are just pools of lava there's acid rain that i talked about which can burn through the leaves and the trees and the trees themselves are also considered anomalous because they can thrive in this toxic environment somehow and the chemicals tend to not bother them even though they catch on fire sometimes now there's no real documented entities that live here just those small mammals and insects but there might have been a race of creatures that went extinct there's some evidence to support this but no one really knows there's just one base here called meg base 42 and it has 12 people who live and study the level here but it's so volatile and hard to explore that they can't really do much so they're just trying their best i guess to enter this level you can no clip from level 41 and to exit you have to go through one of the exits that's been found it's really dangerous but it's the only way to leave and pretty much you have to jump in a lava pool i know that's crazy but that's the only way to get out is just jumping feet first into a big pool of lava at the base of the volcano now for a short second you will feel pain and you'll feel a burning sensation like you just jumped in lava but eventually you'll wake up on level 93 and you'll be all right for the most part i still would be terrified of just jumping into a pit of lava but Hey, whatever. And yeah, that was level 42, aka The Horizon. A pretty crazy level filled with forests and mountains and volcanoes and volatile air. Just another day in the back rooms. So Backrooms Level 43 is classified as a Class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and not secure, I'll tell you that much for free. The level physically looks like an infinite aquarium, theme park, mall type building that's made up of four specific areas that I'll get into in a second. Aside from those four areas, there are a couple of weird anomalies that happen when you walk around. One of them is that fog will just randomly start rolling through the hallways it doesn't seem like it's dangerous but who knows another weird instance is that at random times you'll hear boat noises echoing around the level uh, again it's not dangerous it's pretty weird though 
Outside of the aquarium tanks that are in this level, there is nothing alive. And it seems like the entire structure and outside of the structure has been abandoned for a long time. There's trash on the floor, and most of the stuff on this level and inside the buildings are broken or don't work properly. But inside of these buildings is a really weird property as well, and it's that a weird voice comes over the intercom sometimes and says stuff like, The park is closed and some just other stuff like that. It's completely random when it happens, but it's creepy to me. Now, I'm gonna talk about those four main areas of the level, which are the park, the main building, the staff halls, and the water world. So the park is an outdoor area, obviously, and it's always daytime at first. There are a ton of sidewalks that cut through the zone, but most of them just randomly dead end or don't lead to anything. There are benches, bathrooms, food stands, signs, just typical stuff that you'd find in a normal urban park. This area is 100% quiet, no creatures, nothing. It's just so unnervingly quiet that you might be able to just lose your mind. After a couple days of wandering around this zone though, you'll start to see the way the level really looks. This park is actually really broken and nasty looking, which is completely the opposite of what it looks like originally. So after a few days, it shows its true form. That's totally not terrifying or anything. Next is the main building, which is the cool place where all the aquariums and hallways and food courts and that kind of stuff are. The aquarium tanks are filled up with a mixture of salt and almond water, uh, but somehow the animals can still live inside even though it's not 100% either. So the fish that are freshwater fish can live in the salt water and those salt water fish can somehow live in this freshwater. It doesn't make any sense, but it's the back rooms. Nothing makes sense. Now this aquarium part is the only one in the main building that isn't broken down or falling apart and that kind of stuff. The rest of it seems really abandoned and it's kind of like an abandoned mall in a way. The power's flickering on and off and the water is dripping from the ceilings and floors and that kind of stuff. And food places that are on this level are always empty and they have no food and that kind of stuff. Pretty sad if you ask me. And if you walk into this destroyed area for another few days, you'll be sent to the next and third zone called the Staff Halls. This is a big network of brick hallways with pipes on each side of the wall, and there's mechanical machinery noises that are just blasting throughout the entirety of it. It's kind of like what happens on level two and level three if you mixed it together, but those pipes on the walls here are filled with the same water mixture that's in the aquarium tanks, which means that it's coming from somewhere, but no one knows where. Inside of the hallways, there are these rooms that jut into these old offices that have computers and papers and filing cabinets, that kind of stuff. Most of the computers don't work, but the ones that do all have the same file on it. I'll talk about that in a second, but there's also other files that are all centered around fish themes and ocean stuff and you know that kind of thing but that one creepy file that's on all the computers is titled new underscore video dot avi now, this file is a glitchy corrupted recording of some human running through these hallways on the level while screaming and hollering and that kind of stuff as a huge flood of water follows behind him and when that flood catches up to him the recording cuts and an unidentified fish creature swims up to the camera and just looks at it and then it cuts off. Now that is pretty terrifying, I'm gonna be real. And that leads us to believe that the entire level can flood. And by, by golly, it can flood because the way it does is by watching the video that I just told you about. So if you can avoid it, don't click the file and the level won't flood. You'll be fine. The last zone is called the Water World and it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. The Water World is when this level is flooded. After someone watches the video, like I just explained, the level will flood with water from an unknown source and the aquarium creatures all get set loose because the water rises up and they can swim up. And there's also unknown fish there and that unknown fish creature is available here too. They're all just swimming around the level and things like sharks that would normally be aggressive in real life are now aggressive towards you since they're out of their tanks. So that's pretty bad news if you're just swimming around. <laughs> there could be sharks chasing you or that unidentified fish creature. Either way, the flooded water world is extremely dangerous. The bad news is that this flooded water part of the level is one of the exits you can use which speaking of exits you can do that by walking into some bushes in that first park area 
which is what I would do. Or you can find an opening in the ceiling of the level when the level gets flooded and go through it and you'll be sent to level 85. But like I said, I'm definitely choosing the bushes exit because I'm not trying to get drowned in water. To enter the level, you can go through a taxi on level 11 to be sent here or swim deep, deep down into level 7's ocean and you can find a hole that kind of connects here like a wormhole. Pretty neat. Backrooms level 44 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe with a pretty low entity count. And the entities are not the dangerous part of the level. The level is thought to quote, be intrinsically connected with the front rooms, or with real life. It looks like a completely bare and empty mall outlet that's kind of run down, but it also kind of looks like a big office space. Only half the lights work, but the half that does work doesn't make that loud buzzing that most of the backrooms levels make, especially level zero. Now, the lights do buzz a little bit, but not nearly as loud as the other lights, which is important because that buzz is a huge part of the backrooms, and for this level not to have it, it's worth documenting. There are window entities in the darker sections of the levels, but so far nothing bad has happened near them, nothing too bad at least, so they're considered pretty safe. Now all of the active window entities here show moving pictures of real life behind them. So if you look out of them, you'll see kind of like a slideshow of real life, and that's why this level is connected to reality. There's actually a theory that the windows themselves are some kind of gateway back to the world, but no tests have been done to show it, and I'm not trying to jump through a window just because I see the real world. If I've learned one thing, it's to not trust the backrooms. This entire level has been classified as non-Euclidean, meaning that traveling and mapping out and just looking at the level is pretty much impossible since the layouts are always changing, and if you walk in one direction, you'll end up in a completely different direction than the way you walked. And on this level specifically, the glitchy non-Euclidean effects get worse the further you get from the level entrance. So where you spawn in on the level won't be too bad, but the further you wander out, the worse this effect will get, so you might not be able to find your way back just watch out like i said earlier this level is completely empty and barren there's literally nothing here and that's still true except there is a weird fluid that's made up of unknown atomic compounds and this fluid is in a bunch of different rooms on this level and it looks kind of like liquid coal it's a thick black liquid it's very viscous and acidic and it has the ability to corrode cardboard and wood uh quickly and in some cases it's actually been seen dissolving the walls and ceilings of this level uh yeah that's pretty weird i gotta be honest so it goes without saying that you should avoid it at all costs now as far as creatures go on the level it's actually pretty decently rare to see a creature but when there is one it's most likely going to be a wrangler now wranglers are these huge things with a bunch of arms that burrow down into the ground and stalk their prey i've done a full short on them so i'll link that below but in the darker parts of the hallways or rooms there can actually be any entity from the back rooms it's just that the wrangler is the most common now those window entities that I talked about earlier also have a really, really strange effect because recently there's been multiple witnesses saying that they saw a silhouette figure behind the window pane. It's only showed up when the situation that the wanderer was in was really anxious or tense. And when you look at it, you get really weird feelings of liminality and anxiety. Nobody really knows what this silhouette is or why it's here, but it's thought that it could represent a person's fear about not being in reality. Either way, it's really creepy to just have a random shadow behind a window in, a, in, the, in the back rooms. I mean, that's that's creepy. And the entity has sometimes shown that it can talk with a wanderer through short, repeated phrases like, he is destroying my home, he is going to bring doom to us all, only when you escape can you find him, reality will shatter along with my home, this place has lost its safety, you must stop him before he takes over. So, I mean, that's pretty terrifying to listen to. It's also really vague, and no one really knows what it means. And also, the context of those phrases doesn't make any sense, because there's nothing actually too dangerous about this current level that we can see. I don't know, maybe the shadow could see something we can't. Maybe it's trying to warn you of something. Not sure, man. 
There's only one outpost here from Meg, and they try to study that thick, corrosive liquid from earlier, and around 20 people live in this outpost. And to enter the level, you can walk through a randomly appearing metal door on level 0, and to exit, you can go back through a similar metal door, which will lead you this time to level 9 or 11. Good stuff. Level 45 of the Backrooms is a pretty safe level, and it's classified as a Class 1 difficulty, and is safe and secure for the most part, even though no Backrooms levels are truly safe, let's be real. So this level is a huge city with skyscrapers and other giant buildings, but instead of the ground being made out of, you know, normal city stuff like concrete and roads, this city is floating in a void made out of some kind of ink. The buildings in this ink look exactly like buildings from real life. To be specific, there are 33 buildings in total, and they're all formed in a circular pattern, and at the very middle of that circle, there's a building that looks just like the Empire State Building from real life. The buildings closer to the Empire State have less entities and more electricity, but the further you go out from that center, the more entity infested the buildings get, and the less the electricity goes. And these entities specifically are death mobs. However, the Curabitter bird keeps the death moth population in check, but it's still pretty much an infestation when you get really far away from the center. Each of the floating skyscrapers has its own gravity inside and slightly around itself. The void around the buildings that everything's floating in, that inky stuff, doesn't have any gravity for items and objects, because it does have it for people. And if a person tries to jump into that void and floats, well, they won't float and they'll fall into the dark abyss below forever and no one knows what happens to them when that happens so don't do that now the inside of each of these buildings seems to be the exact same as its real life counterpart they even have some of the same furniture decorations and all that stuff too it literally looks the same but the creepy thing that sets these buildings apart from the real life one is that everything inside are really detailed styrofoam sculptures yes you heard that right everything is carved out of styrofoam and it's it's not real, like in real life, it's just styrofoam. That's creepy. Now since you can't jump out of the doors or the roof to float to different buildings, you'll have to find the fire escape of each building that you go to to be able to be sent to the next building. I kind of like this method a lot more than jumping into a void and falling to the end of time, so cool. As far as bases go, there is one base here called the Backrooms Research Consortium, which is a Backrooms remodeling company outpost, and they stay in the center Empire State Building, and they do research on the levels and its weird inky properties. To enter this level, you have to use the hub, and to exit, you have to go through the Empire State's building's fire escape to be sent back to the hub. But each of these buildings is connected, like I said, through those fire escapes. And it'll be hard to get to them because of the death moths that are flying around, since, you know, they're giant man-eating moths. You probably don't want to interact with them. Backrooms level 46 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, with a low entity count. But the entities are dangerous. I'm sure you could guess by its name, but the level looks like an Arabian desert from real life and is very hot during the daytime and really, really cold at night. The cycle of day and night is split into three specific parts though. Day and night, like normal, and then the third one is dawn. Each of these parts has their own unique things to them, like when it's daytime, the temperatures can reach up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or 70 degrees Celsius, which obviously is way too hot for anyone to live in, and the only place to get out of the sun is by hiding in the ruins of the ancient civilization that has long since left, but I'll get into that stuff later. The nighttime is literally almost as dangerous as the daytime, because the temperatures get unnaturally cold. Like I'm talking negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 30 degrees Celsius. So without the right gear, you could turn into a popsicle if you're not prepared. The dawn time is the most habitable time to explore the level because it's a good mixture of hot and cold. It hovers around 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or around 30 to 40 Celsius. So it's going to still be hot, but not as hot as 150 degrees and not as cold as negative 22 degrees. It's also important to note that the level doesn't follow a normal 24 hour day night cycle because 
it cycles between day, night, and dawn randomly. Sometimes these random cycles can even last entire years. And there's a chart that organizes the different times. And as you can see, it was daytime for six months, but then nighttime for a year, and then day for three months, and then dawn for three years. And right now, as I'm recording this, it's nighttime. So you really never know what time it's going to be when you accidentally get sit here. You just better hope and pray it's not day or night, unless you want to get melted or freeze. Another dangerous factor of the level is that there's literal sandstorms that can just start up at any time. Daytime dawn, night, anytime, no matter what, these sandstorms can happen. And when these sandstorms stir up, they bring along the extremely dangerous entity here called the Sand Spirits. These are really aggressive entities that attack on sight. Their only weakness is liquid, which kind of makes sense considering it's a desert, but I still wouldn't want to be wasting my water by shooting a sand demon. That's just me though. This level has extremely rare oasises, oasises? That appear. These zones are not affected by the heat or cold or the sand demons, but the likelihood of you finding an oasis is so low that you probably shouldn't count on it. So throughout this video, I've mentioned some of these ancient ruins of a civilization that used to call this level home. Now I'm going to talk about those people, and I'll get into some theories on where they went and why they left, you know, besides the 150 degree temperatures. So this ancient civilization is often referred to as the Ancient Ones. They're the builders of these anomalous ruins that are scattered throughout the level. There isn't one specific known reason why they left, but it is theorized that something called the Cataclysm is the reason that their buildings got destroyed and they ultimately left. I have no clue what the cataclysm is, but I mean, it sounds cool. It's also theorized that these ancient ones are somehow intertwined with the lost. Now, the lost are another old group of people scattered throughout the back rooms. They build temples and that kind of stuff too. So maybe the ancient ones left this level and then populated some of the other levels and then eventually became known as the lost. Some of the letters and pictures on the ruins on this level look similar to the lost paintings and pictures and stuff like that. So we're just drawn conclusions here based on the evidence. What is known though is that these ancient ones were actually pretty advanced when it came to charts of the stars and that kind of stuff. There was maps of solar systems and star patterns, things you wouldn't normally think ancient civilizations would know, they knew. The language of these people is actually written into manuscripts and scrolls inside of the main temple on this building. Now, this language has not been decoded yet, but there are events drawn that depict something called a, quote, higher day or a hot day. And apparently, according to pictures and stuff, this day melted rocks and soil and the actual earth itself. So maybe that's what the cataclysm is, the hottest day ever, I don't know. I'd leave this level too if it was hot enough to melt rocks, man. The only base on this level is in that temple area I just talked about. It's still partially standing, and it's really the only building that's still kind of together, but Meg Base Desert Rose lives here, and there's around 20 people there. To enter this extremely dangerous level, you can walk 10 miles in level 80, and to exit, you can find an oasis, even though it's rare, and then jump into the water. Or you can find a ruin that just has a random modern-day office door in the wall. Walk through it, and you'll be sent to level 4. So Backrooms Level 47 is classified as a Class 3 difficulty and is unsafe with a low entity count. The level itself is described as a primeval old forest, or a forest that seems to be as old as time itself. And this forest is extremely resistant to any changes made in the grounds or on the surrounding areas by humans, which I'll touch on that effect in a few minutes. The trees here are tall, and most of them are way taller than 100 feet, and they're thought to be thousands of years old. On the base of the trees and on the ground pretty much everywhere, there's moss and lichens, and they're just growing rapidly and covering most of the surfaces on this level. Inside of the forests, there has never been any direct sunlight because during the quote-unquote daytime, there is a thick fog that just rolls through the top of the trees, and it kind of clouds it from the sunlight above. But this fog will only stay during the daytime, and it actually disappears at nighttime. And when it does, you can see some kind of moon in the sky. It looks just like the moon from real life, but the main difference is that this one is way closer to you, so it's just closer to the atmosphere. You can also see stars in the sky, but so far, no constellations or anything recognizable have been found. 
This forest really cannot be mapped because it goes infinitely in every direction and there's also properties that prevent searching the level. These properties are the non-Euclidean features that are so common throughout all of the backrooms. But in this level specifically, parts of the forest can just shift and change at a moment's notice. And specifically, this can happen when you take your eyes off of something. It kind of acts like time reversal in a way. And this effect is how the level gets rid, quote unquote, of man-made alterations to it. So let's say you make a campfire in one certain spot and then you walk away and you take your eyes off of it. Well, as soon as you do that and you look away from it, it could disappear and the entire area could look completely different, even though it was technically the same area you were just at. As you can imagine, this effect might make you think you're going crazy or walking in circles or something, so it's best to just try to stay level-headed. Along with the trees and the dirt and the rocks, there are also occasional streams and creeks that run throughout the forest. The water is safe to drink, as far as we know, and there are different types of fungus growing near it, like mushrooms and stuff, which can be eaten if you're really hungry, but some of those mushrooms may cause you to hallucinate, so eat with caution. As far as entities on this level, well, there are several, but there aren't really any entities that you'd see on any other levels, because here, there are things like snakes and birds and small mammals and frogs. So far, the creatures are like normal ones from real life, but instead of just being regular creatures, they have really weird anomalies that happen. Like, really weird. For example, if you unalive a snake, or if you hurt a snake at all on this level, then a giant red titanoboa will appear and will hunt you down until it gets you. And if you don't know what a titanoboa is, it's pretty much a massive, massive snake. And on this level, it's referred to as, quote, the Great Old Adder, or just the Great Adder. And that's where the level gets its name from. Also, an adder is a small poisonous snake from real life, if you are wondering. But the Great Adder on this level is not small, it is huge, and it will try to get you. The old adder appears every time a snake is unalived or harmed, so if you're walking through the woods, make sure you don't do anything to snakes at all. So other than a massive snake, there are also packs of large black canids that roam the forest when it gets dark outside. Now these things are really aggressive and hunt humans. They're called black shucks or adderwood wolves, and they're kind of like more aggressive versions of dire wolves. They use really loud howls to communicate and to scout and to hunt their prey, and once the prey is chosen, well they all attack. The best way to not get eaten by one of these things is to climb to the highest tree possible and wait until until the daytime, because in the daytime, they go back to their caves. There are also big bucks and doe deer, uh, but those are pretty boring and normal compared to a giant snake and a huge wolf pack. So now as far as bases and outposts go, uh, well, this is where it gets kind of scary. Some wanderers have ran into a curvy, windy trail in the woods and have followed it for days and sometimes even weeks. The people who follow the trail obviously do it so they can try to find a way out of the level, but what they end up finding was a break in the trees that opens up into a field or a marshland. The trail then continues into that field and it leads to a huge manor house or sometimes an ancient old megalith looking thing. Both the house and the megalith exist at the same time, but it's creepy how it works. This area is the headquarters of a cult on this level called the Ophion Occult Order. Not much is known about them since they're extremely hostile and aggressive, but what is known is that they worship that giant adder snake from earlier as some sort of deity or god. So, yeah. This cult practices old, dark magic and can seemingly control things that aren't normal. They can sort of control the giant snake and convince it to go places, and they can also control control the black shuck wolves because they run away from a single cult member. Even if the entire pack of wolves is there, they won't attack, they'll run away scared. So yeah. These members often wander into the woods with big black cloaks on and are normally not too aggressive if you just walk past them, uh, but they can be if you make them mad. To enter this level, you can just get no clipped here. I mean, no one really knows how it happens and it's the same for the exits. No one knows how you get out, it just happens. But the most common no clip zone is through the dead trees that are on this level, so yeah. Some of the cult members claim that the trail on the level can be directly linked to real life. They also claim that they can control the trajectory of that trail and change where it ends at and change where it goes and turns, but this isn't confirmed. And who's gonna trust a cult? I mean, but yeah, if you wanna leave, just try to no clip into a tree if you can. 
So first off for the video is level 48, or the Sunset Beach, which is classified as a class habitable and is safe, secure, and literally has no harmful entities. The level itself is a never-ending beach that is bordering a lukewarm ocean. And the deeper you get into the level behind the beach, there's a huge tropical rainforest. The level doesn't have a day or night cycle and stays constantly at sunset. And the sun itself is a reddish yellow color. Along the beach, there are makeshift houses that have been built over the years. Some of the houses are really nice with modern looking appliances and stuff like that, which is weird considering this is the back rooms. But oh well. The forest I talked about earlier is around 600 feet behind the beach and is full of typical tropical trees. In the forest, there are also some species of animals that are harmless. For instance, there's a jaguar type creature called Langwires. They have blue skin and purple eyes instead of, you know, the typical dotted skin from real life. There are giraffes, which are like giraffes, but have green skin and they're way bigger than the real life ones. And there are several other creatures that have similarities to real life ones, but they're different color, different sizes, and they act different. They're all calm. There's one community here called the Varroca Farmers, and it's got 300 people that harvest Varroca plants on the level. And then there's other people who live here that aren't in that group, but they're not documented either. So yeah, this level's kind of like an oasis in the back rooms. And honestly, it's a place that I wouldn't leave if I had made it here. There'd be no point. It's a safe level on a beach. I mean, <laughs> how else better can you get? To enter this level, you can no clip into the sand on level 134. And to exit, you can swim to the bottom of a lake in the forest to be sent to level 121. But like I said, I don't think I'd be leaving here. It's safe, it's a beach, it's always sunset, it's not hot, it feels great. I mean, why, why would you leave? Backrooms level 49 is classified as a class 2 difficulty and is unsafe with a small entity count. And the entities here are pretty weird, and I'll get into those in a second. The level looks like a battlefield war zone area, as I said earlier, similar to the ones from World War 1. But there isn't actually any fighting that's currently going on, it just happens when you get out of the trenches that you spawn in. And the level is really only dangerous if you leave that trench area. Or, if something called a plane attack happens, which I will also talk about in a second. But if you do make the fatal mistake of jumping out of a trench, you will be attacked by weapons, wink wink, and you will be pretty much turned into Swiss cheese instantly, if you know what I'm saying. I can't say the actual thing or Susan will be pretty mad at me, but you know what I'm saying. And you will become victim to the other bodies in the field. The source of this enemy fire is unknown, but is obviously extremely dangerous and it should just be avoided. Just don't, don't get out of the trenches, like, don't do it. Now something I hinted at earlier was those plane attacks, <laughs> which are the most actual present danger to the people inside of the trenches, because one of those projectiles that the planes are dropping might land in a trench with you, and you know, that, that can't be good, it might explode. These plane attacks can last seconds, minutes, hours, days, and if you aren't careful, it can drive you insane. The most important thing to do is to find somewhere in a trench with like an overhead cover and to try to keep as calm as humanly possible to avoid losing your sanity. However, if a person doesn't keep themselves calm, they'll eventually succumb to shell shock, which is also a real life thing too, and the symptoms range from stress and anxiety to lack of blinking and that kind of thing. It's bad. And those symptoms happen in the back rooms too, but something else happens as well. If a person does in fact get affected with shell shock, they will start turning into something called a faceless soldier. And those are the entities on this level. And the faceless soldiers are split up into two different groups, the reds and the blues. The reds are the ones who stay on the west side of the quote unquote no man's land, which is the battlefield area. And they wear red clothes. The boomstick, wink wink, that they carry is a bolt action infield rifle, but they also carry explosives and that kind of thing. And they carry water canteens that are full. They normally don't attack wanderers though, and they're pretty chill and they ignore everyone they walk past in the trenches. So 
but they will attack you if you hit them or something. And on the east side of No Man's Land is the Blues. These are on the complete opposite side of the Reds, and they're obviously wearing blue clothes, and they carry M1915s, along with explosives and water canteens. However, these water canteens are almost always empty, or about to be empty, unlike the Reds, who have full ones. And on top of that, these Blues are sickly and thin and injured most of the time, and they'll attack you if you instigate it. They're pretty much worse off than the Reds, like they're getting beaten battle. Both sets of the Faceless Soldiers don't really do much besides walk through the trenches, but it definitely would be unsettling to see a soldier with no face and with weapons. I mean, I feel like I would have some sort of, like, existential crisis. To enter this level, you can go into a Humvee on level 35 to be sent here. Those are those military vehicle things. And to exit, well, there's literally no way to, as of right now, which adds a little bit more spookiness to the level, since you'll be trapped in a war zone with random planes dropping explosives onto you. That's scary. But yeah, this is one of the only war-themed levels in the back rooms, and I honestly find them pretty disturbing because of how terrifying war actually is. Like most of you watching and me, uh, we can't even begin to imagine how scary war is, and this backrooms level would throw you into that feeling and sensation with no warning and no escape. So I definitely think it's one of the scariest. Plus, you get attacked if you even peek out of a trench. That just adds to the scariness. Backrooms level 50, or the Moribund Highway, is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, with a low entity count. The word Moribund means something that's almost dead, and the level is named that due to the extreme heat that's here and how the level is feeling like it's on its last leg because of how hot it is. There's also random people that walk on the road here and they're really unpredictable and dangerous, so avoid the people. The level is an infinite four-lane highway that is split into two different two-lane highways, and on these roads, there are cars that have completely stopped moving, almost like time has just stopped suddenly and the car is stopped with the time. Some of the cars are stopped while they're in the process of changing lanes or passing another car, leading some people to think that the level's time literally did just stop randomly one day and all the cars were stuck in momentum. On top of these stationary cars, there's literally no other sounds on the level. No wind, no animals, no car sounds, no nothing. Just the sound of you breathing and walking which could make anyone go insane if you think about it. Every single car here has a Nevada license plate, and all of them have the exact same letters and numbers. I-80-L2-W-V is what every license plate says. The cause for this is unknown, but that's very strange to me. None of the vehicles are new either, and most of them look like models before 2011, and on top of that, most of them are actually old, like pre-2000. And it's also safe to say that most of the cars are not safe to get into because you might get sent to a dangerous level if you get in them. The only actual safe ones are random RVs that are parked, but these are so rare that you shouldn't count on finding one. However, the cars are not the dangerous part of this level, and neither is the heat, really. The true danger is the people who roam this level randomly. Only very few of them have even been seen, and there's only been one person to actually interact with them. And the one encounter that the Wanderer had with a human on this level made that person go insane and run into the desert. It's unknown if the humans are normal, or if they're just trying to scare people on purpose, or if they're entities, or whatever they are, but you should be very wary of them. They're kind of like zombies. There's also been some other strange encounters in stories whispered around the back rooms. Like one time, someone was sleeping in an RV and woke up to loud banging on the side of that RV. And they went outside to see what it was, and they didn't see anything or anyone that could have done it. So I'm going to guess that it was the quote-unquote humans that live here on this level. But who knows? There are no bases here, because who would want to live in a desolate desert? I mean, not me. And to enter this level, you can get into an RV on level 35, and then get outside of that RV, and you'll be sent here. And to exit, well, there's no known exit of this level, and the people that were here just randomly go missing and really aren't heard from again. Although it is thought that this level could somehow take you to level 69, which is another road-based level, but it's unknown. Just like most things in the back rooms, this level doesn't really make any sense, and it's crazy, and it's scary, and all of the above. But yeah, this is the 
level that rounds out my series of going over levels 13 through 50, and I think it's a perfect end for it. That is it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this past couple months of uploads. The Brugley Summer Spectacular started on May the 1st, and now it's August the 1st, and it's ending. And I cannot thank you all enough for the support you've given the channel over this amazing summer. Thank you all so much, and I am very excited and happy to continue to upload content across all my channels. Thank you so much for the support. This has been the longest video that you just watched on my channel ever, so... I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. If you haven't seen my level 0 through 13 video, check below for that. But I've officially now gone over the first 50 backrooms levels in a row on the channel, and I'm super hyped. My goal is to go over all of them eventually, which is going to be impossible because there's more being made every day. So there's a long way to go, you could say. And I hope you all are hyped for the ride. This summer has absolutely been legendary and will definitely go down in the Brugley channel lore. And the channel is almost at 400k, which is something that I literally, <laughs> I can't believe it. And I'm so grateful to all of you for allowing me to get here. It's because of your support uh, for watching the videos, liking the videos, interacting in any way that the channel's made it this far. And I genuinely, genuinely appreciate every single thing everyone does. So thank you. Uh, if you're still watching or have watched to the end, comment W. Uh, we're going to spam W's in the comments to pay tribute to the levels 13 through 50 series over the summer and this awesome video. It's been a monumental journey for the summer. I hope you're ready for the fall. I'll see you all on Wednesday as I return to my normal upload schedule where I go over random levels, crazy levels, dangerous ones, safe ones, anything like that. And I hope to see you all there. Thank you for an awesome summer. And now it's time to get ready for the best time of year, fall and winter and Brugmas. You know what it is. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Hype. I'll see you later in the next video.